field rolling behind the pace cars. We are getting set for ESPN coverage of the Ford 300 here at Homestead Miami Speedway. So many special stories we'll be covering today from championship contenders, battles in the top 10. How about owners trying to get in and someone going for a record here in the NASCAR history books? To elaborate on all these stories, let's go down to the pits first. Here's Dave Burns. And Doc, I believe today's championship is going to come down to decisions and execution. Whether you're following Carl trying to overcome or Clint hanging on to that lead he has, these paid professionals behind the wheel, over the wall, and on top of the pit box are going to need to make choices and then make execution to make those choices stick. Decisions and executions today for a champion after 300 miles. Jamie? Well, Dave, Homestead is notorious for upset wins when it comes to a championship on the line. Two drivers who'd love to get it done today who remain winless this season, David Reagan and Mike Bliss. They sit fourth and fifth in the points. Now, David Reagan has had a standout season, and with him starting third today, this is a great track for Roush Fenway Racing. It could be a great day to get his first victory in NASCAR. Mike Massaro? Jamie, the driver's title isn't the only championship that will be decided tonight. Of course, the owner's title is in the balance as well. A very slim margin between the 20 car that leads the two car by only 28 points. The pressure falls on 18-year-old rookie Joey Logano to protect that lead. But don't count out the veterans at RCR. Dan Daringhoff, the crew chief for Clint Boyer, told me recently, we're here to win the whole championship, not just half of it. Shannon? Mike, two weeks ago at Texas Motor Speedway, Kyle Busch earned his 10th win of the season and tied Sam Ard's single season win record. Well, today he has an opportunity to pass that record and rewrite the history books. Kyle Busch is not running for a championship. He's only going for a win. Combine that motivation with the fact that he's in one of the most dominant cars on the racetrack. The chances are very high that while we're celebrating a champion here tonight, we'll also be celebrating a new nationwide record. Doc? It is a 300 mile race, 200 laps on a one and a half mile racetrack, pit road speed. And pit road can be a bit tricky getting on and off. We'll delineate that later, how you do it. And there's the pit window, unless you're some of these guys that tend to stretch the fuel a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that in the Cup Series with Bob Osborne. We don't know how far these Nationwide Series cars could actually go, but uh, that's about the estimated pit window. A couple of young dreamers from the Midwest, Clint from Kansas, Carl from Missouri. Are these two guys thinking about championship. Let's listen in to the radio. 10 4, guys. Uh, you've been doing a great job. We've been doing extraordinarily well. So let's keep doing what we're doing. Have a good time tonight, no matter what. And uh, just enjoy yourselves. And I just appreciate everything. Carl Edwards outside front row saying his thank yous to his guys for how hard they've worked. And he knows this is important to lead this first lap. How, how much is your heart rate up right here, Dale, when you're getting ready to come get this green? Oh, man, battling for a championship, knowing what you need to do to get out there. And you've got a young man on the inside there that wants to lead because he has the burden of trying to win an owner's championship for his team. Uh, I, these guys are pretty pumped right now. This is exciting stuff. It yeah, is. I, I've, I've been in situations in the car, you know, and that was fun. But it's even as more, much exciting up here talking about it. Joey Logano, the 18-year-old on the pole, trying to give Toyota their 21st victory. Remarkable season for Toyota in 2008. Carl Edwards trying to win back-to-back -back NASCAR nationwide titles. Clint Boyer back in 13th spot. Can he get it done? We're about to find out as the green flag waves at Homestead. Defender, can he keep it? Logano will lead first time by, but Edwards is still there. I think Logano wanted those five bonus points for that owner's championship. Looks like Carl gave it everything he had there, but Joey just had a little better car here in the early lap. I think what he had as much as anything was that inside position, short away around there, and he used that to his advantage. He obviously has a very fast race car by putting it on the pole. 
You see why Carl put all that tape on his windshield and on his dash. That sun does uh, get right down in their face coming down that front straightaway. Okay. Guys, there's one good thing about Carl not leading that first lap. It does not mimic what happened to them at Darlington. Remember, Carl was a pole sitter and chose to sit on the outside for that race. And going into turn one, he hit that he hit the wall with that race car, damaged it. They ended up finishing last that day. That was a big points loss day for them. Carl kept it under control here. It's a different racetrack, but same scenario. And even though he hasn't led yet, keeps his car clean. See the two car top of your screen coming down. Clint Boyer has already gained a position. He's uh, passed Clawson up in the 12th spot. Remember the scenario if he finishes eighth or better, no matter what Carl Edwards does, he, talking about Clint Boyer, will win the championship. He's looking a lot higher than eighth. He wants to finish in the top five or better here just to make sure that he's uh, got a little cushion. He's just rocking along right now, not trying to do anything. Uh, to get himself in trouble. Now here's second place heating up with Jeff Burton right on the bumper of Carl Edwards. This is the car we talked about that Richard Childress added to the, the race this week. The guy that won the race a year ago and he's doing exactly what RC wants him to do. Yeah, he wants to put some pressure on the 60. He actually wants to see if this 29 car can get a win. He would love to get that for Jeff, Jeff Burton here uh, the last race of the year. Looking back across and watching uh, the Chevy just blow by on the inside. Yeah, Carl wasn't going to press the issue right here early in the race. Let Jeff Burton go. See if there's a little something he might could learn. Jeff Burton has scheduled to run only 12 races in 2008. This one added late. And of course, remarkably, he has not won a race. He won five times a year ago. And as you mentioned, uh, Adding him here not only helps their championship chances, but gives him a chance to get to victory lane. He's got one more chance, and he's really good here, like you said, and he's uh, he's going to have a good shot today. See Denny Hamlin now sneak, sneaking in this picture with the 32 car, the yellow car behind Carl Edwards. Hamlin not driving for Joe Gibbs here in the final race. That is the Braun Racing Toyota. There is a Joe Gibbs car. Kyle Busch going for that record. Trying to become the all-time winningest driver in a single season, currently tied with the legendary Sam R. He would love to break that record. I know he's had such a phenomenal year in the series. Now this team that Denny Hamlin's driving for here in this 32 car, they've been very impressive since they switched these over to the Toyotas. Uh, they've run oh. with Kyle Busch. Well, that was a close run call. Run with Denny Hamlin. That was a close <laughs> call. Yeah, they've had Brian Vickers uh, in the stable too. They, they've They've run extremely well and it's really improved their their organization to the point of, of being contenders uh, pretty much week in and week out. A moment ago, the 12 car, the young driver Justin Allgaier, who just moved over from ARCA this year to drive for Roger Penske, just had a little brush with the wall there in his Dodge. See him up on the top side here. Yeah, ran out of racing room. I think we're going to see some of that today. That they're going to flirt with that outside groove, and uh, there's just not quite as much grip as this track used to have right up next to the wall. It reminds you a lot of Darlington. We hear you hear us talk about that a lot when we talk about a track where you're running right up next to the wall. This track really has aged a lot, like the old Darlington was. And when you try to run that groove right next to the wall, there's just hardly any room for error. Joey Logano out front. By the way, the 90 and 91 cars of Terry Cook and Todd Bodine have both headed to the garage area. And it is an 18-year-old leading the season finale here in the early laps at Homestead. 13 laps complete here in the Ford 300 at Homestead Miami Speedway. And the young 18-year-old Joey Logano has led from the wave of the green flag in his Toyota up front. And the point standings there, Carl Edwards being shown 30 points out of first place right now. Edwards on the racetrack is fourth. He has actually lost two positions on the track. And Clint Boyer has moved up three from 13th to 10th. Yeah, Carl didn't start off all that strong at the beginning of the race, but I think as you see the laps uh, coming on the tires now, and as they run more laps, you'll see Carl Edwards start moving back to the front. Seems to be his kind of style is uh, when the car starts slipping and sliding, he can do it better than most. Let's update the two car with Jamie Little. Well, Doc, I'll tell you what, Cliff Blair was all smiles in his interview pre-race with Mike Massaro, but he told me earlier he watched the truck race last night and said it made him so nervous to see what was happening with Ron Hornaday and Johnny Benson. He said, I don't know if I can handle it. He's never found himself in this position in the final race. Back in 2005, he was actually in the position Carl Edwards is now and just lost the championship to Martin Truex Jr. So you imagine there's a lot of nerves behind that helmet. <laughs> 
Dave? Jamie updating Carl Edwards right now, running fourth, challenging for third on the inside. He'll take that spot from Denny Hamlin as they head down into turn number three. Backing up what Andy was talking about, uh, the car is a little free at the start of this run, but coming to him, and they expected a couple of these cars, including Hamlin, to come back to him. What am I think, Andy? You've done this before. You know what's going to happen when the track changes and Carl's going to be easing back by him. Well, you just watch Carl Edwards and his, you know, his driving style is he doesn't mind slipping and sliding and steering that car to the right. And that's what happens, you know, when you start putting laps on these tires. See right here, you got Mike Bliss and Ryan Newman. In a battle, Ryan Newman moving up pretty nice here. Looks like he's got a pretty good car. 21 of Scott Weber back there, the other children's car. Newman, by the way, making only his second start of the year in the Nationwide Series and first in a Chevy for Kevin Harvick. Yeah, and that car looks awful good early in the, the race here. Newman's been down the bottom, able to make passes. How about Scott Weber right there in that 21? He's moved up about 12 spots since the start. He's got a good car. That's exactly what Richard Childress like to see. All three of those cars be really competitive to help out their championship calls. Emotional weekend for Scott Wimmer said he drove his first race for Richard Childress racing at this track in 2006 and today or tonight will be his final drive with these guys as he says goodbye. A couple of cars are going back behind the wall to 52 of Brad Teague and the 31 of Kenny Hendrick have headed to the garage area. Pretty good battle of surging there as they try to make a move inside the one car of Bliss. Again, that is Wimmer trying to use that bottom group. Picking off another car here, moving his way to the front. I love this racetrack though. Look at these grooves. You can run all over this thing. You got that high groove. It's got a little more banking up there and that's why it makes it a lot better or, or makes it even when these cars run that bottom line, they got a little shorter distance. But now that you got that extra banking in the top, it uh, kind of evens things out. Yeah, and they're battling up here in turns three and four right now. And we talked about a while ago as they go down the front straightaway here. They're having to battle some sun issues for the time being. What's happening is turns one and two are already getting pretty much shaded over. I think that'll help these guys cause that want to run on the bottom of the racetrack. Getting a lot more grip down there. 88 car Brad Keselowski trying to make a move for fourth position by the 32 of Denny Hamlin and he will take that spot away. Having to squeeze in the lap car there kind of took his groove away. Hamlin able to take the spot back. Mike. Yeah, Brad, uh, not all that happy with his race car right now. Got on the radio real early at the drop of the green flag saying it's loose but manageable. Really looking for the car to roll the center a little bit better, but it seems like they've got some work to do before the sun goes down. That actually might play into his hands here when the sun does go down. It looks like he's got, still got a pretty good car. Look, look at Jeff Burton now. He has run down Joey Logano. He's all over him here. And this is what we expect of Jeff Burton, too. This is exactly the kind of thing that you expect is he's going to get ready to try to take the lead. Doesn't quite get there for that lap, but uh, Jeff Burton gets his car to handling good on old tires, and that's where this is coming into play. Dave? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hey, now here's a handling trivia question for you, and I'll throw it to the crew chief first. Andy, he says the car is uh, loose on the throttle, but it needs to turn better in the middle. So uh, loose on the throttle and turning better, those are kind of together. So how do you fix that for our new leader? Okay, here's why you do that, Dave. You fix that loose, you know, the, the middle part of the corner. If you can get that thing to turn, it won't be quite as loose on the throttle. So uh, it's kind of hard to you think of it as being a conflict, but really if you just fix that, problem and he's got through the middle of the corner it should help that loose off not good news for the competition knowing that uh, they're having trouble and he's still going by and taking taking the lead in the race here's his teammate Wimmer again still running side by side now trying to move up and take that spot away from the 33 car of Ryan Newman that is the 11th position that'll be 14 spots Scott Wimmer has made up from the start of this race Scott Wimmer does not have a ride for 2009, but hoping that this final race performance will get him there. Right now, he's doing a heck of a job. See Brad Keselowski still battling with Denny Hamlin for that fourth spot. He almost had him passed until he came up on a lap car just a couple of laps ago. Since then, Denny Hamlin's moved more towards the top of the racetrack, and that's where Brad had been running. Both these drivers on the right side of your screen uh, among the 13 that are doing double duty here running in the NASCAR nationwide race today in the NASCAR Sprint Cup finale here on Sunday. Here comes Carl now on the 20 car. 
Carl leads him back in and moving that car up across the racetrack from the bottom where he started uh, in the early laps. Yeah, he'll search around this racetrack and find just where his car is going to work the best. He He's not going to be satisfied to just sit there and run lap times that are not as, as competitive as, let's say, the leaders are. He'll move around and find it uh, where he like, his car likes to be. Clear, all clear. It's so valuable to have someone like Carl Edwards who doesn't push the issue, knows his car is going to come in. He searched around and found where his car is working best right now. You can see right here, I think he moved into that second spot on that lap. So the points changed. Clear, all clear. Good job. Down to 24 points now. Dave? And guys, Joey Logano just recorded that his car has picked up a big push, that 20 car. Another thing about Carl Edwards, he has fun behind the wheel. He set the fastest lap time in final practice yesterday, and crew chief Drew Flickensurfer told me just after he did that, it was lap one of the session, he said, where's P1? And Drew told him, you, by three and a half tenths. And Carl said, ooh, that was fun. <laughs> Carl Edwards has moved back to second position, but Clint Boyer is on the move as well. He's up to ninth spot. Right now, the margin just 24 points. Back in a moment. On the Motorsports calendar tonight, Auto Club of Southern California NHRA Finals qualifying. ESPN 2 at 11 Eastern Time, then a long day tomorrow at Homestead with all the action covered. NASCAR now pre-race show 10 a.m. Eastern time. Then our coverage of the race starting with NASCAR countdown ABC at 3 Eastern. Then the NHRA finals ESPN 2 7 Eastern time. Then the post-race wrap up on NASCAR now 10 o'clock Eastern time Sunday night. We've got it all covered for you here on the ESPN family of networks. And from the ESPN Pit Studio, Alan Bestrick, Rusty Wallace, Brad Doherty, and Ray Everham caution free so far. And just two leaders, Jeff Burton out in front after Joey Logano led the opening 21 laps. Starting to see the shadows grow on this racetrack. What's it going to mean? Well, it's going to mean a lot when we go from daytime to night here. The grip level is going to come way up. The guys that are struggling early, maybe with loose cars, the nighttime should fix that. Ray, I've always, every time I used to run at this racetrack, when it cooled off, the cars got a lot faster. They handled a lot better. Yeah, and we looked in car. Carl Edwards dropped back a little bit. His car is a little bit free. Right now, though, a few laps on the tires, getting rubber down, track getting cooler. He's coming in about eight laps. I predict Jeff Burton's going to have a, a little company up there for the lead. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who hit their setups. And a couple of times this year, we've been to tracks that historically have gained more grip when it's gotten darker, and it just did not happen. It'll be real interesting, though, to see tonight, once it cools off, who is on their game. Got uh, 29 cars on the lead lap. That number going to drop as these leaders start steaming through the field. And Doc will keep an eye on Ray's prediction here. Remember, eight more laps. We'll watch Ray. Ray's been pretty <laughs> close. Uh, he does what he's doing out there. The two car now. We mentioned he started back in 13th position all the way up to ninth spot. But the margin is down to 24 points. There comes Clint Boyer. And as you look at Clint, let's talk about the tactical move his car owner made, Richard Childress, by adding the 29 car of Burton, or bringing Jeff Burton to this race. Because if he didn't have Burton in this race, it would be this guy's adversary, or Carl Edwards, leading the race right now. Well, it might be his. It might be Carl Edwards anyway here in just a little bit. But right now, Burton does have a little advantage over Carl Edwards. And that's exactly why Richard did this. I mean, he's hoping that this 29 car can beat that 60 car and really help their situation. What's going on, Jamie? Well, guys, Clint Boyer started off loose, but the sun is setting, and you know what that means. Car is tightening up, and it's getting good for Clint Boyer. Right now, he sits ninth. Remember that magic number? Eight. He has to finish eighth or better tonight to win that championship, no matter where Carl Edwards finishes. One more spot, guys. Jamie, you got to wonder how much. DJ, how much does the driver think about that? Or does it go away when the race, when the green flag waves? You're just worried about getting one spot at a time. Oh, no. <laughs> You're very aware of what's going on <laughs> and where you need to be. You can't put it out of your mind. You, you, you talk, and I'm sure that all of us, as we were battling for our championship, say, you know, you put it out of your mind, you just go run the race. That's not, you, it's impossible, I think. Everybody I've always talked to, and I know how it affected me, that's just uh, the way it was. That's what you set out the year to do, was to win the championship. You're in, you're in that position now so that's what's totally on your mind pretty good move there by the 40 car rookie Brian Clawson uh, taking a spot away that 12 spot away from Ryan Newman and here comes the 18 car the other Joe Gibbs car going by his teammate Logano so Kyle Bush now moves into fifth position there's Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming up behind Joey Logano also 
It's like Logano struggled a little bit with his car. Yeah, you know, he said a really fast paced jump out there early. We've heard him say that his car's gotten tight. I think that's why he was able to jump out there because his car was a lot tighter than the rest of these guys. And so that allowed him to get out there. But now it's too tight. A little tussle of the teammates here. 66 car, Stephen Wallace, David Strimmy in the 64 up high as they are running 17th and 18th side by side on the track. Strimmy trying to take that spot away. I think Rusty's probably saying this is what we strive for is to get our cars running equal, but they'd rather have them maybe for 7th and 8th instead of 17th no, and 18th. How about 1st and 2nd? Yeah, maybe yeah. that'll come later on tonight. Look now here Kelly. comes the 47 car, Andy. Yeah, look at Kelly Byers. He has come from the back of this field and is just mowing them down right here. Goes by Mike Wallace. Now he's getting ready to pass David Strimmy. They had an engine issue yesterday. Had to go to the back of the field because of an engine change. NASCAR only allows the one engine. And back up front, here goes Cousin Carl. He becomes the third leader of the day and the first time Carl has led here at Homestead, Miami. Dale, can you see the scoreboard from the driver's seat when you go around here? Uh, yes, it's a tough one to see, but you can do that. <laughs> you, you think Clint's looking at it right now? He sees that 60 car up there. Is that any extra pressure on you? There's no doubt about that, that Clint, I'm sure if he didn't look at it, that they made him aware of that. Look at the point standings. Four points now separating Clint Boyer and Carl Edwards here. And they smooth now. Click off some laps. What he needs to do is click off a lot of laps up front and try to lead the most laps, and then you'll see that minus four points go to plus one because he'll get five bonus points for that. Dave? And you guys alluded to something that Crew Chief Drew pointed out about his driver as well at this racetrack. He likes moving around, likes fighting line, and this right side tire that Goodyear provides makes these cars slide just a little bit, kind of like they did at Charlotte. And so it slides around. Carl likes that. He can adapt to it. And when his car came around to him, he went up there and took the lead. And Dave, exactly what Andy was talking about, how the racetrack has come to Carl Edwards. Jamie Little. Well, remember I reported that Clint Boyer started off too loose? It sounds like it's going the other way. excitement in Mr. Boyer's voice there. Understandably, you know, you get to this point, you want your car to be good. That's what you expect. That's why you're in this position. Closing in on first pit stops and every pit stop critical here. They can make it essentially on four stops, so each one could determine or lose a championship. Carl Edwards, our leader here, lap 42 at Homestead. Carl Edwards has now led the nice last nine consecutive laps here in the Ford 300. And you see Clint Boyer, who he's chasing in the points, is back in ninth position. The points differential began the day at 56. It is now down to four points. That's how far behind Carl Edwards is in trying to catch Boyer to win this championship in the season finale. I think it just changed. Clint Boyer just got passed by another children's car, Scott Wimmer. Now they were battling and Wimber's back, uh, Warriors back by him, but that's how close all of this is. It could change just in a matter of seconds. Now you won't hear anything, you know, this at this point in the race, but if this was coming down to the last lap, <laughs> you might think that Richard might be on the radio right here. The guys are going to be moving in on scheduled pit stops here in a handful of laps or so, and getting on the pit road's a bit tricky here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Yeah, that's putting it mildly. They have to get off on the access road. Okay, our points. We have a tie right now. But getting on the getting on the pit road here, you have to use the access road as you enter turn three, and that is just totally flat. Matter of fact, it's almost off cambered a little bit. It, it drops off the other way towards the grass, and it has a lot of sand on it. You can go as fast as you want around it, as fast as you can possibly try to go around. And uh, but we've seen a lot of guys slip out into the grass, so it's going to be extremely exciting when we get to that part. Shannon? We saw Scott Wimmer just go around Clint Boyer. Now you guys might be thinking that he might be a little bit easy on Boyer, who of course is running for a championship, but I asked the team if there was any conversation about that. They said no way. You remember Scott Wimmer does not have a ride for next season. He's looking to show what he can do, and he's looking to win this race today. 
42, the first car on the pit road. Juan Pablo Montoya in for his service. We see that, and just to follow up on what Shannon talking about, yeah, I think you know, owners do things to try to help them win championships. But the great thing about our sport is you really don't get those orders like you see in some other forms of motorsports. They let the guys go out here and race, and you know, if that's what happens, that's the way that it is. See, Junior take that spot away from Kyle Busch. And he's right, right up next to that wall. You see how high he's running in the corner? He's just stayed right up next to that, that wall and making a lot of time. He's, Chase Miller. he's making this the longest possible racetrack that you could run around here. He enters the corner of the highest and runs right against the wall, but he's flying. Chase Miller coming down for what would be his scheduled stop in the nine car. Others now starting to peel off the 16th place car, the one car of Mike Bliss coming in. I said that on the access road, they could go as fast as they want, but as they get to that commitment cone, uh, as you enter the pits, then they have to get down to pit road speed. Anticipating making a big uh, catchy adjustment there on the right side. See, Mike Bliss must, must not be too happy with his car. They're making an adjustment. Hope, hope it's better here. Four tires, 15 four, not bad. Yeah, he had lost about four positions the last five laps of the car, not turning in the corners. They came in to make a major adjustment. We just joined our coverage. The 60 car of Carl Leverage has led down the last 14 laps. Joey Logano, the pole sitter, led the first 21 laps and was passed by Jeff Burton for the next 17. And now Carl has led the last 15. Clint Boyer being shown back in 11th position, and the margin is now four points with Boyer in second spot. Carl Everts has taken the points lead here in the first quarter of this race. I don't think it's a time to panic for Clint Boyer yet. We have a lot going on here. As you see, Jeff Burton making his way to pit road now. Trying to get Woe down to 45 miles an hour. Can't afford the mistake, as you heard uh, Tim Brewer talking about got to have lug nuts on, got to get them full of fuel every time. Burden coming down. Kyle Bush will be coming down behind him. Let's go down to Mike. And Kyle Bush has been complaining the car's been tight all the way around this race course. They're going to take a swing at it. They're going to go up a round and a half on the track bar. A four tire change will also make an air pressure adjustment trying to free him up, Dave. Jeff Burton, who led early, will get Sunoco fuel. They're not going to make a chassis adjustment, but he believes that this car needs to work better in the front end. That'll be an air pressure adjustment and four tires for Burton as Jeremy Clement stops in front of him and he just clears him. Denny Hamlin in that 32 car thinks the car is a little bit too tight and it is rolling. That's exactly what he used to describe this number 32. They're going to make a track bar adjustment and four tires and fuel for Denny Hamlin, who is, of course, looking to get a victory here in this 32 car today. In a couple of slow stops, Denny Hamlin 19-7 and Jeff Burton's 18 plus second pit stop. Here comes Carl Edwards. Well, he really hustled that car around the, the access road there. Got it slowed down before he got to the commitment cone, though. His teammate coming out in front of him there, the sixth of David Reagan. Let's go down to Dave. Decisions and execution. The driver executes well. The decision, just a slight air pressure adjustment for a car that has really come around for our race leader and championship contender. They will take on four tires. Carl said it was a little bit snug, but good on the throttle. And that was a problem he had earlier. It was too free on the throttle earlier on. Four tires, just a little bit of a weight there. And now he's gone. Jamie. And the decision for the two team was to come when the leader Carl Eds came. He said his car is plowing. He was pretty tight up and off the corners. Track bar adjustment, four tires for Clint Boyer, who must nail these spots tonight, guys, to keep that track position. Boy, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. 43, 43. He 
Here's the 88 car that had assumed the lead. Brad Keselowski coming in. The uh, junior JR Motorsports car come on by Hendrick. Oh, nearly gets out. You talked Man. about the off camera trying to get the car to come on up here. Nearly missed the entrance of pit road. Mike. And the 88 team up on the wall awaiting Brad Keselowski. You remember his car was real loose in the early part of the run. Well, it's gotten a little bit tight on exit. They're going to go with a full fuel load, four tire change, no chassis adjustment, just a little bit of an air pressure adjustment trying to correct that car. But as Andy mentioned earlier, they may be banking on the sun going down to really bring this car to life. And the owner of that 88 car, Dale Jr. in the five, hasn't raced here since 2006. He said he's just a bit too tight. They were going to make a track bar adjustment as well. Four tires for Dale Earnhardt Jr. down and away, guys. Junior away, here's the rookie, Brian Clawson, coming in now for his first pit stop under competition at Homestead, Miami, as a full-time nationwide driver. Shanna. Well, Brian Clawson looking to tie up that rookie of the year status. He was six points behind Landon Castle, who is not in this race. He was saying earlier in the run that the car was loose. Looks like those guys are going to give the 40 car four tires for Landon Castle and get him out. Great pit stop because he gets a little trouble getting off pit row. Jamie. One of the best runs of the day so far is the 47 car. Kelly Byers had to drop to the back of the field because he was in a backup engine. They've had problems all weekend. He started in the back, worked his way up to 20th. He said uh, they're going to take four tires and fuel for the 47. A little bit tight. He needs more grip for Kelly Byers, guys. Byers had made a great run from the back of the pack. Now, here's the 66 coming back in for a pass-through penalty for a tire violation on that pit stop. We can show you the penalty from the crew cam on the 38 car. Looking up, you'll see the tire oh, yeah. rolling away. Yeah, that tire has to be on the inside half of the pit box before the car leaves the pit stall. You have to control that tire before that car can leave. Now they're trying to get together here to figure out what happened. Here comes third. This is a third place battle with Brad Keselowski passing Jeff Burton. So yeah. with, with the recycling of the pit stops, it is now Carl Edwards back up front, then Kyle Busch, and then this, these two here, the 88 and 29, third and fourth. Yep, Burton had a slow stop, and it's cost him a little time on the racetrack, and now another spot here to Brad Keselowski. Yeah, Carl Edwards has almost a five-second lead now. He's within two laps of being the, the lap leader for the day. No points differential whatsoever. You see the top of the ticker there underneath the uh, running ticker. You see there is no points differential between Edwards and Boyer. They are tied. Now Edwards would own the tiebreaker by virtue of total wins if they were to finish tied here at the end of the night. Let's go over the wall with John Busolo, who is the front tire carrier for Bobby Hamilton Jr. and listen in and watch during the pit stop. All right. I see him inside. Four tires of fuel. Let's get out there and get this done. To the right side. Five all. Great for the index. Index. Get the tire. Back to the wall. Left side. Wait for Richard. Real good. Let's go. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. The frenetic pace all taking place on pit road under 13 seconds to get four tires on. A championship to be decided between these two guys. Right now, they are tied, deadlocked, even at the top. Under caution for the first time tonight here at the Ford 300 Homestead Miami Speedway. We'll show you what brought out the yellow flag. See the 03 car get in the corner here and get too high, get up against the wall, scrapes it all the way around. See some pieces flying off of the car, so NASCAR threw the caution to make sure there's no metal on the track. Under the yellow, our lucky dog is the uh, seven car. The Aaron's lucky dog free pass goes to Mike Wallace. He was the first driver one lap down, and now he will get back on the lead lap, giving us 19 cars on the lead lap. Most of these guys did not pit. You see all the leaders out here, Carl Edwards, uh, see uh, Denny Hamlin and actually see Kyle Busch. Denny Hamlin's further back. They stayed out, but we, sit, we saw some of the cars from the back part of the field come in on the lead lap. Let's visit with our in-race reporter. Carl Leverage up front. He just joined our coverage. Carl came in with a 56-point deficit on the two-car of Clint Boyer. 
Carl Dale Jarrett, ESPN, you got me? I got you, Dale. Well, looks like everything's going your way so far. Yeah, it's going great. I just saw up on the uh, scoreboard there, we're tied for points right now. So uh, I, uh, I guess we just got to keep doing what we're doing and hope for the best here. Hey, has the racetrack already started to change as far as grip level? Yeah, it has. It's changed just a little bit, and I'm hoping that uh, hoping that we can keep up with it. I uh, I think this car is going to come to me a little more. Seems pretty good on the long run, and that short run right there, they were pretty good. So, uh, yeah, just uh, enjoying it. Okay, Carl, thanks. Good luck. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Carl has removed some tape inside the car. He was using it for that screening from all the, uh, the sun now going down where he was blinded by the sun coming down the straightaway. So when the race started, he has tape all over this car, all down the windshield, all up on the dash. And now he's going to work. He's got a caution now. He can take some of the stuff off of here and doesn't need it anymore. Yeah, the biggest problem now is getting it off his gloves. <laughs> Dave? And one other interesting note, right before the race started, Carl said, hey, some notes for next year, if we race it this time, right here, the back window needs some tape, too. I know that's hard to get to, but just make a note of it. <laughs> I'd like and to see him try to pull that off the back window, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He wouldn't be able to get to reach that, except maybe with that pole that he used to clean the windshield at Montreal. Oh, yeah. He's, he'll use whatever he has to. you got to be able to see, especially when you're running these high lines and so close to the wall. Uh, that vision is so critical. Yeah, and what he's, what he's talking about with the back window is when he's looking in his mirror to see the cars and whenever he's clearing himself there, it, that glare on the back window won't allow him to, to see out the back until the sun goes down. Aerial coverage from high above Homestead Miami Speedway brought to you by our good friends at Goodyear. Get there on solid armor technology with the strength of Kevlar for toughness and the comfortable ride. Let's check in on the two car back in 10th position. Jamie. Doc, Clint Boyer, not a happy camper and right now sitting 10th. He said he's just too loose on entry and he gets tight the deeper the run. He said, I just can't get going. I'm not fast. You guys need to keep me updated on what's going on with the front of the pack and help me out. So look for an air pressure adjustment perhaps on the next stop and see if this car can get better for Clint Boyer. Too loose on entry, struggling in the middle of the corner, and very concerned about what's happening at the front of the field. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. I think uh, Clint is really concerned about his car not being quite good enough to get up in the top five where he would be comfortable. When you're sitting outside the spot you need to be in, it's just nerve-wracking, and uh, I think he's, you can see that in his, in his voice and what he's saying to his crew. Yeah, and he also knows that there's a few cars behind him, Jamie McMurray there, Jason Leffler, Brian Clawson, Brian Newman, that have pretty good race cars, and they don't get his uh, any better, and they're going to have limited number of pits stops to make it better because the limited amount of tires that they have. Carl Edwards is now the race leader and the points leader by five points here over Clint Boyer. Getting set for the restart, so let's listen into the spotters as we go full throttle. Nice move shift here, ready. Pace car's all gone. We're ready. Thomas ready, I'm going to say. What is those three? Back to the 18, 29 right there with you here. Still there, clear low, clear low. Two back still there, still, still there. Still clear low, clear low. Clear, clear, clear. Racing. Clear about four back here. Still outside. All clear, bud, all clear. Good job. For now. Clear by five, 18. That is Kyle Busch, the 18 car that's moving in. He's gone by the lap car of David Strimmey. Strimmey in 20th position. And Carl Edwards can ill afford to let uh, Kyle Busch get by here because he needs to lead the most laps. Pretty good battle, three wide back here. Hamlin on the bottom of the racetrack. And Denny Hamlin making a move here with these good tires on his car. We've seen him fade just a little bit when they get a few laps on him, but, uh, and Dale Jr., his car kind of comes around after he runs a few laps. See if Kyle Busch can get a run on the bottom of the track. 
Remember, it took Carl's car a little bit to come to him early on, but the track is now changing. Yeah, in normal circumstances, Carl would probably let Kyle Busch go here and lead this thing, but tonight he needs to lead the most laps. He's not going to let him just go by. He's not going to give it to him. Now he'll he'll race him hard for it, and uh, if Kyle Busch can get it, he'll get it. But it won't it won't be easy for him. Yeah, this this is the the last race. This is a different circumstance. We see Clint Boyer trying to make a little pressure here too. He made up one spot. Now he's trying to get two more spots in one lap. Boyer up to eighth position, going by the 20 car, back and forth around the 20. Trying to hold the position. There's David Reagan above him in the six. That's a nice move for Clint. Now he's moved up into the seventh spot. Now he's getting passed back by David Reagan. Just needs to be careful not to put himself in a bad situation right here. No, but I think that the racetrack's kind of playing into his hands right now. It's just cooling down quite a bit. What he was fighting seemed like that the bottom of the racetrack wasn't the best place uh, to be earlier in the race, but now there's a lot more grip down there. There's less banking there, so you have to have that the, the coolness of the track to give you that grip. That's as far up as Clint Boyer has been in the field thus far tonight. Started back in 13th, got to 10th, and now moving to 7th. Kyle Busch will once again go downstairs and try to take the front spot away from Carl Edwards. Yeah, like I said, he might get it, but he's going to have a fight on his hands for it. <laughs> I believe he might get him here, though, but Carl's going to make him earn it. He knows making that pass on the bottom side is not an easy thing to do. See Carl will fight back on the outside here, keeping that momentum and translate in some straightaway speed. Oh, great battle. Carl just wants to see and hold on as long as possible. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Four wide down the back stretch. Logano <laughs> in the 20 car. 33 is Newman. There's Steve Four Wallace. Wide again. Just be smart here and use your line. Goodness gracious. Montoya in the 42. There's Wimmer in the 21. Racing all over this racetrack at Homestead, Miami. One in the 47, Kelly Byers, who's come from the back of the pack, and the one of Bliss, they are 16th and 17th. Right with Mike Wallace, he's in this mix too. He's even driving, trying to drive under Mike Bliss. Mike Bliss is also on the inside of Scott Legacy. Height racing. Eleven cars, Legacy, the one you were talking about. The 59 car, Marcus Ambrose, has been struggling a little bit. Somewhat of a surprise. He is two laps down in 31, 31st position. Ryan Newman in the 33 car, driving for Kevin Harvick. In front of the 20 car of Logano, that is Tim Yellow's out in the backstretch. Yellow's out in the backstretch here. Watch him. Oh, that's Jeff Burton. Big pack coming at you. I just lost it, guys. I'm sorry. Now, with that spin by the 29 car in contact with the wall, Clint Boyer will actually move up one more position. I just got away from him. Heard Jeff Burton say he got away from him. That's very uncharacteristic of Jeff Burton to lose one. Man. And Pat Smith, they're talking to Jeff. White Kim watching anxiously on the monitor. Sorry, guys. But it shows just how much on the edge these guys have to drive these cars to get speed. You can see Jeff running the high line, just got away from him. He corrects it. Looks like he's got it under control, but all of a sudden snaps back. Hard hit Man. into the outside wall. See uh, Denny Hamlin taking evasive action as well as the rest of the field. Yeah, he's sitting in a bad spot yeah. right there. Guys did a great job of avoiding it. That just shows you how close the edge these guys run, man. There's no room for error there, you know. There sure is. Trying to stay right there. You got a big pack coming in. Over 160 miles an hour contact with the concrete, and it can damage your car in a hurry as Burton heads back to the garage area. Yeah, they're going to be on pit road here. Kyle Busch had taken the lead from Carl Edwards, so he's going to be the first one on pit road here. Here they come, slowing down at 45 miles an hour. Let's go down to our Castrol GTX triple pits. Mike Massaro. And Kyle Busch pretty happy with his race car. He says, though, the big problem, he's a little bit free in. He can't really get into the corner the way he wants. But he told Joe Weidman what he wants done to the race car. He said, leave it alone, and let's see how this thing responds with just four stickers. That's what they'll do. 
Jamie. What a difference 10 laps made for the two car. Clint Boyer, he said, my car is good now. So you guys, now that we have track position, just put stickers on it. They're going to make a small air pressure adjustment on the left rear. Other than that, two cars good, Dave. Carl Edwards' car, very good. He will get Sunoco fuel in it. They will take four tires on, just a slight air pressure adjustment. Nothing big so far. Race leader coming in. He will be past leaving pit road. Tire strategy puts cars off of pit road in front of Carl Edwards. Keselowski gains two. You see Mike Wallace up 11 spots. Kyle Busch back five positions. The Aaron's lucky dog is the 64 car of David Strimmy, who was pedaling hard to be able to get back on the lead lap. Now he will be the 20th car on the lead lap when we go back to green flag racing in a moment. chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup concludes tomorrow here at the Homestead Miami Speedway with the Ford 400. Jimmy Johnson poised to claim a third consecutive championship. History tying. Only been done once before in the 60-year history of NASCAR. You can see it starting with NASCAR countdown. The Ford 400 from Homestead Miami Speedway. ABC tomorrow at 3 Eastern time. So a little strategy has shuffled up the field, and now Carl Edwards is going to be back 10th in line for this restart. Clint Boyer 14th for the restart after some other teams did a little strategy there. No, a lot of two-tire strategy going on. A lot of things are changing around right now, and another thing is getting much cooler out there, so the cars are really going to change a lot, guys. And we saw how much track position makes a difference here, and we did see two tires work a little bit last night in a truck race, so a lot of different strategy. Both of these guys seem to have more grip in their race cars, so it's going to be interesting to see if they advance together through the field. Clint Boyer is going to hook onto the back end of Carl Edwards and try to stay as close as he can for this next run. All I can think of is how agonizing this has got to be for the guys behind the wheel and the crew chiefs on top of the pit box watching this thing go up, down, inside, out, backwards <laughs> as this race unfolds for these next 120 laps, Doc. Very agonizing for a championship. It's been a long 10-month, 34-race season. Right now, Carl Edwards back in 10th position and uh, Boyer back in 14th. Now, the reason for the caution, the spin by the 29 car of Jeff Burton. Mike. And the Holiday Inn team continuing to work on the 29 car. Jeff, what happened? Um, driver not very smart. I uh, we not really lose on that set of tires, which is what we fought all weekend. We were either going to be really good on old, on long runs or good on short runs, and so we we put our, uh, our long run stuff in there and uh, was really loose on new tires. And um, I just, I just overstep my bounds. It's, uh, you know, trying to make lap time, trying to, trying to, trying to catch the 88 and get back up to those guys up front, and uh, just drove over my head and lost it. Well, guys, they're working on the car. It looks like there's a little bit of radiator damage and uh, maybe some other cosmetic damage. They're looking to try to get that car back out on the track. Doc. Fourth winningest driver in NASCAR Nationwide history, Jeff Burton, 27 victories. His last win came in this race right here a year ago, now with a damage to Chevy in the garage area. Top three cars did not come on the pit road that they will lead them down to the green flag. Newman, Montoya, and Byers. What about our championship contenders? There is Edwards in 10th spot. Boyer back in 14th. The separation, 33 points. Now Edwards behind the two car in the point standings. Yeah, as far back as Edwards seems to be in 10th, I can assure you that Clint Boyer looks up through there and he's thinking, oh my gosh, how did I get back in this position again? You know, you're talking about 14th, that's literally 28th almost because you've got lap cars down on the inside. Yeah, both these guys are going to have some racing to do right here on this restart. Coming down for the green flag, 18 laps away from the halfway point here in the season finale to crowning a champion for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. That's Ryan Newman out front right now, and see Montoya go to the inside, trying to take the lead away. Montoya in the 42 car, making only his second nationwide start of the year. Look at Newman just go roaring by on the high side. And Bobby Hamilton Jr. kind of decided who was going to win that little battle. <laughs> Again, the pit strategy a moment ago, the seven car of Mike Wallace, the one of Bliss taking gas only, the 17 and 88 taking two tires. Look at Carl Edwards in this. At least three wide, if not four here. Kyle Busch in the middle of that sandwich. Let's see if Carl will follow him through. Look at, look at Kyle Busch drive that car down in the corner. Make it stick. See David Reagan go to the top side. It's Jamie McMurray. Three, three teammates right here all together. 
Wow, that's six, seventh, eighth, and ninth, and now Reagan goes right in behind his teammate Carl Edwards. Their second spot, Kelly Byers going by Mon Juan Montoya, as well as Keselowski. Man, what a great race Man, Kelly Byers has run so far. But all the racing all over the racetrack has been incredible tonight. Back to this pack here, the 18 car of Kyle Busch on the inside of the 99, David Rudeman. That is for position. That's fifth the, spot. Fifth spot. That's fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth on the screen. Again, a couple of young drivers up front, Keselowski and Kelly Byers. News that Kelly Byers may, be, uh, may not have a full-time ride in 2009, so nothing motivates your driver more to show your stuff than looking for a wait place to go. Your little audition on the racetrack. Here comes Kyle Busch. You see him just fly down in the corner. His four tires are a, a big help also. Yeah, it takes that fourth spot away from Montoya, who had pitted on the previous caution. I think that's why they stayed out. Here comes Carl Edwards, the inside of David Rudeman. While all this is going on, Clint Boyer's in 12th spot. That's Edwards there fighting for six. Show you back where Boyer, there comes Boyer's car in 12th position. The two car back behind the seven of Mike Wallace and in front of the 20 of Joey Logano. Carl Edwards can just, you know, just forget about how to being careful. Just go to the front. He doesn't have to worry about anything. On the other hand, Clint Boyer needs to just make sure he doesn't make a mistake in this situation because this is kind of a testy part of the race when you've got these guys on different strategies. Extremely important to show more patience than you've ever shown before in this situation right here if you're Clint Boyer. You see Carl Edwards trying to pick up another spot here. This would be for fifth position. Dave. And guys, he's having to use both the top and the low groove on this racetrack. Drew Blickenser for his crew chief told me that he was very good in the high line. In fact, told him in final practice he didn't think he could get it any better in the high line, but a little tough passing on the low side as we see our leaders battling as well. Carl will take that spot. Kyle Bush side by side for the lead. Third position, Kyle Bush. Remember, if you just joined our coverage, Kyle Bush trying to chase history as well. Remember, he tied the legendary Sam Arb with his 10th win in the season a few weeks ago and now trying to become the all-time winningest driver in a single season in NASCAR nationwide history. Yeah, and that might be Carl Edwards' biggest problem in trying to win this race tonight. Is that Kyle Busch? How about Ryan Newman here? He didn't, he didn't even make a pit stop using that track position. We've got a problem off turn four. Michael Annette also brought out this earlier caution. He's in another one here. Caution for the third time a day. The Michaels Toyota has some scrapes already on the right side from that earlier contact with the concrete. Gets it fired, won't pull away, but we will slow the field down and the pace car will come back out. See, he'd been into the wall up there one time and he was trying to stay out at that time. Kind of gave a tug on the wheel and the back end jumped out from under. Didn't hit anything though. On it first because they're flat and then we'll come back and keep fixing it. This is going to be a quick one because there ain't no stuff, so we got to go, boys. See, all four tires are flat from the spin. There have been eight different leaders, eight lead changes. There's our current leader, the 33 car, Ryan Newman, driving for Kevin Harvick. Ryan, by the way, the only driver ever to win this race from the pole in NASCAR Nationwide Series history. Did it here in 2005. The last time Ryan Newman was on pit road was on lap 66, so we'll see if he comes down pit road. Yeah, he and Kelly Byers stayed on the racetrack as did the 42 of Montoya on that previous caution flag. They're not looking towards pit road so far. The leaders aren't. You can see it's open, the green flag waving. So no takers, so we'll take a break. Under caution here for the third time tonight, just nine laps away from the halfway point. Saturday night, ABC delivers college football regional action. Most of the nation will see Boston College, the Eagles, taking on the 19th-ranked Florida State Seminoles. As Bobby Bowden goes for yet another ACC title, 
the rest of the nation, a Big 12 matchup, Oklahoma State taking on the Buffaloes of Colorado. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Let's listen into the radio of the two-car of Clint Boyer. I hit my fender on them a little bit right front. All right, when you come down the front stretch, if you pull his load, I'll check it out for you. See these guys are racing really tight here, three wide, coming off the corner. You see Stephen Wallace just up on the outside of Clint Boyer. Say they don't have a lot of room, three wide. You see this little contact. Not good. You don't want to. Those fenders are real fragile. All right, now I'll tell you guys, it doesn't look like a lot, but it is a little bit, and the front downforce makes a big difference. And you already heard him say that his car was tight. So if that fender's been moved in a half inch, or even looks like it's been more moved to more than a half inch, he's going to feel that. It's going to help the right front tire. It's going to build up more pressure, and his car's going to get tighter. Yeah, that's the wrong direction, right? You're right. If he's already tight, that's going to aggravate that problem. He's also going in the wrong direction in terms of the points lead he had coming in. He had a 56-point lead coming in. And right now, DJ, it is 18 points between him and Carl Edwards. Edwards fifth on the racetrack. Boyer back in 12th position. Yeah, and these are just the most tense moments for Clint Boyer right now. In on these restarts around all of these cars, it's just uh, you have to be extremely careful and extremely patient. Points up there, just 18 separating Clint and Carl. Again, Carl Everts won the title a year ago. Clint Boyer trying to get it for the first time in his career. There's Kevin Harvick up on the pit box. His car leading the race. He's got to be feeling pretty good tonight. Well, Kevin's wife, Delana, back behind him. Chrissy Newman back there. Ryan's wife. Ryan, who drove uh, Kevin Harvick's truck for the first time at Atlanta a couple weeks ago. And what did he do? Went to victory lane. That's right. Won the race. Okay, he had uh, hammered out right there. <laughs> In the gas. And about a eight or ten car length lead. Carl Edwards climbing down on the inside. Going to try to make a move. Getting boxed in a little bit there. Got a tight quarters right there. He wanted to make it three wide, but the 12 car didn't give him quite enough room to do that. So he'll have to wait another corner to try to pass Kelly Byers for that fourth spot. Up ahead of these guys, you can see him racing three wide. Kyle Busch is taking over the second spot from Brad Keselowski. I'm telling you, Kyle Busch may be the reason that Carl Edwards doesn't win this championship because he may keep him from leading the most laps and getting the victory. And if Clint Boyer can finish in the top 10, that might just be the difference. Right now, Kyle Busch has only led three laps, and Edwards has led the most laps. He has led twice for 32 laps, but there's still plenty of laps to run. I think Kyle has his sights set on that 33 car up there pretty shortly. Led Boyer digging on the bottom of the racetrack back in 11th position. And he's gained a couple, or gained one spot. He's looking for some more here. Battle for eighth position, the six car, David Reagan, the 99 car, who's the cup pole center for Sunday, David Rudiman. Rudiman didn't have a good qualifying spot here. It didn't make the, didn't get the lap that he wanted, but he's making a nice run here in the race. Shannon, what's David saying? Well, he's not very happy with the car. Actually, he says getting into the turns is very tricky. He says he has to be very careful. They made a lot of changes on this car so far in this race. On the first pit stop track bar, they've also made some wedge adjustments. But guys, he's been on those tires since lap 65, did not come down and pit on lap 78. Certainly, David Rudiman would love to end this season on a high note. Up front, here comes Kyle Busch. Toyota on the inside of the Chevy of Ryan Newman. DJ, you may have called it. Kyle says, I can get up there and lead a bunch of laps. Not only will I uh, make history with my 11th win of the year, but I can maybe uh, have a major impact on who wins this championship. I think he's more interested in winning the race and making history for himself than he is on this championship. Look at this battle right here. Ryan Newman racing hard for this lead. Let's see him get the nice run off of turn two and down the back stretch. That's to give Kyle a little bit of a bump before they got to turn three. Jamie, 
So he's on a little bit of a different strategy as you see a battle with the two car to the right. That's for ninth position, Jamie Rudiman in ninth spot, Boyer in tenth. And every single position critical for the two car, Clint Boyer. He's doing what he needs to do right now. He's moving forward. He's almost to that spot that he needs to be in. That put him in the, the ninth spot. Next car he's got on his list will be the 42 of Montoya. Lead lap cars there in action. The 21, 32, and 5. That's 13th, 14th, and 15th. Wimmer, Hamlin, and Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, these guys had fallen back on those last pit stops where they got four tires and gotten themselves back in traffic. Whoa, got some contact in the wall, goes Legacy. Got popped from behind by Hamlin and uh, heavy damage now. Cars trying to get woe done. A legacy has no way to steer that car. Man, our guy in the blimp was all over that one. He's on the right battle. Man, too bad for Scott Legacy. 66 got you, man. Fourth caution flag of the night. Might have gotten some erroneous information on the radio a moment ago, but uh, the 11 car. Little touch from behind. Let's see if we can see exactly what happened. Now watch the 32 coming up behind Legacy. Oops. Well, yeah, you see some contact with Stephen Wallace, and then Denny Hamlin has uh, really nowhere to go but into the back of the 11 car. Turns him right straight in the wall. So it was Wallace in the 11 initiated the contact. Yeah, there really wasn't much Denny Hamlin could do in that situation. He's going down the straightaway, and that's where he's supposed to be wide open. Sorry, bud. Now the guy you were bragging yeah. on, Andy, the blimp camera guy. Yeah, he was all over this one here. You see the battle with Stephen Wallace and Legacy, and they just get together. And there, Hamlin just can't quite react quick enough to keep from getting in the back of the 11 car. A couple of drivers battling a lap down four position on the racetrack. Wallace being those guys being shown back in 23rd and fourth position. Scott Legacy climbing out. His plans are to run full time in 2009 for Rookie of the Year. This was to be his seventh and final race to hold the rookie Here status the open. Here they come. You see Kyle Busch stayed on the racetrack. And here you go. You got Ryan Newman, Brad Keselowski, Carl Edwards, Kelly Byers, all these guys coming down pit road. Jamie McMurray trying to dodge the sweeper truck. Remember Newman. And Byers had not pitted since lap 66. They desperately need to come on and get some fresh rubber. Let's go down to Jamie Little. And you ride along with Clint Boyer in the two in the middle. He actually said something I never hear him say. I like it just like that, boys. She's pretty good. They're going to take four tires because Dan Deeringhoff, his crew chief, reminded him they're not going to make it to the end. So the two car happy with his car and up above you see the 33 Ryan Newman. He said he needs to be just a little bit tighter. You saw that car come to life. Going to make an air pressure adjustment track bar four tires. Dave. Bottom of your screen. Carl Edwards gives up fourth place for two tires and Sunoco fuel. So a bit of tire strategy there. Yeah, you see these guys getting two tires and getting off pit road quick. I think these guys have gained 11 spots. Here they are coming off pit road. The two points contenders taking two tires. Like they might have saw what happened. They were able to see what happened in the truck race here on Friday night. Two tires worked for the guy who won the championship. At the Ford 300 Homestead Miami Speedway, you can see a lot of oil dry has been put down in turn one. We're going to be under caution for another lap or so while they get that cleaned up. Very interesting strategy has just played out on this most recent set of pit stops. Let's talk about it with just a minute with Rusty Brad and uh, Ray Stur First of all, Kyle Busch not stopping. Yeah, he locked, him, me. locked himself into having to pit twice. Right now, everybody else has got that, that pitted then only has to pit one more time. So Kyle's got to be, he must be looking at his caution history and knowing there's going to be more times to pit. But he's locked himself into pitting 
two more times. Right, there's been a lot of cautions, though. I really think that it's not a bad move. We looked at Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman stayed out there and it worked out good for him. From my calculations, it looks like the 18 car could run about 38 to 40 laps still. And it worked pretty good for Ryan Newman. Newman was out there holding that track position. Probably not a bad call. Probably relying on another caution yet. David Reagan also didn't pit. How about Carl Edwards and Clint Boyer going for two tires? Both went for two tires. I think that Clint Boyer is trying to mirror everything that Carl Edwards does. He's trying to stay with him every run. He's going to make sure when they get in their last run, if there's another caution, he's right there with him. Lined up third and fourth are Edwards and Boyer respectively. Have a look now at our nationwide insurance race rundown. What's unfolded in the first half of this thing? Well, Carl Edwards tried real hard to lead the first lap. Joey Logano beat him to that. Jeff Burton went to the point. Then Edwards got out front. He, so far, has led the most laps in this race, but he doesn't have a whole big pad where that's concerned. That transition to darkness has begun to happen. It really is. You notice the cars that were loose in the beginning are the cars that are running fast lap times now, and there's a lot more grip on the track. The guys that were tight are going to continue to be tight. They've got to free their cars up. And one that was loose that got away from him was Jeff Burton. Kyle Busch looking for that record-setting 11th win. Surprise, surprise. Kyle Busch is right in the mix of things. He's up front leading the race right now. He looks like he's charged towards that 11th win. Well, this racetrack's changing a whole lot right now, but I think now it's pretty well steady state, so these guys should be able to adjust on this surface. I think the temperature's not going to cool down much at all now, guys. So as they run under the caution, Kyle Busch is the leader, David Reagan is second. Both those drivers did not pit under the yellow. Edwards and Boyer third and fourth. The championship still hanging in the balance with 94 laps to go. Less than two laps to go to the green flag here at the Ford 300 at Homestead Miami Speedway under caution for the fourth time today. Scott Legacy, by the way, checked out and released. Let's visit with our in-race reporter, Carl Edwards, who's running third. Carl, Dale Jarrett, ESPN, you have a copy? Right, I got you, Dale. Well, it looks like a little strategy being played out there with the two tires. Was that uh, mainly because you needed fuel and keep you out of that hornet's nest back in the back there? Yeah, that's... Uh that's what uh, what Drew's probably figuring there, you know. And um, we uh, we got a real good race car. This thing's real good, so we don't want to get behind on fuel if we get another one of those long runs, long green runs. You know, it looks like uh, you know Clint's just kind of doing what we're doing, which is uh, which is smart. And he's hanging tough, so you know if we get a long run here. I think this car is pretty good. Uh, your car, you say it's good. Is it good enough for that 18? Yeah, not on the short run, but I'm, I'm almost certain it is on the long run. I think uh, think fast, and uh, you know, and he definitely does a good job. But I think we can beat him. We're faster than him that first run, and I, I think the uh, the long run will suit us. Okay, thanks for talking with us, Carl. Thanks, Dave. NASCAR has added a lap because a lot of speedy dry on the racetrack with the contact there on the back stretch and the heavy impact with Scott Legacy. Let's visit with Scott. Janet. Doc, Scott Legacy was running 24th when that contact happened. Are you all right? And can you, I know you haven't been able to see the replay, but can you tell us what happened from your perspective? I have no idea what happened. I, I got to thank Rick and Cheryl from America's Incredible Pizza Company and Tony and Brian Mullet for giving me this opportunity. We um, really, really tight all week, and we brought a different car here just to try something before the year's out because we're just in test mode for the last seven races. And really tight all weekend and they just made a made adjustment there was making it better and got held up there by some cars in front of us and just kind of trying to go forward and you know get the lap back and and get racing again and, and just run over on the straightaway i'm not i, I don't know i got to see the replay because i'm still puzzled you know i i really have the, the utmost respect for rusty wallace and i love going to him for for advice when i can and and you know he's really open about it and, and you know steve and i have a good relationship so i, I I'm puzzled. Uh, who knows? All right. Good news is Scott Legacy is solidly in the top 30 in the points. So going into Daytona, he will be in that race. Doc? And running for Rookie of the Year in 2009. He'll have a good shot at it. Kyle Busch chasing history is our leader. Two drivers chasing championship. Edwards and Boyer back in third and fourth. Back at Homestead Miami Speedway. Season finale for the NASCAR Nationwide Series for the Ford 300. Kyle Busch is our leader. David Reagan, both these cars stayed on the racetrack under this fourth yellow flag. Edwards and Boyer, as you've heard, came on for only two tires. Okay. Turn, the lights, okay. turn the lights back on the safety car here to go another lap. They've got a tremendous amount of speedy drive and fluid down in turn one. They're trying to get cleaned up. Let's listen in on the two radio of Clint Boyer. You're not going to blow that off against the wall. They want you all to run through it. You're going to have to blow it off, man. It's out of control. This getting in a one's really bad, too. It ain't dry yet. I'm telling you. 
Yeah, he sees that strip. It's a lot of speedy dry, and you can see the fluid that they're trying to clean up actually bleed through the speedy dry. So it's going to maybe even change the gracing groove just a little bit getting into turn one. I was going to ask you about that. All that speedy dry down in the turn, and DJ, you're going, you're just hauling into that turn in turn one at 160 miles an hour. How much can you adjust the groove? <laughs> you just drive where you don't see that speedy drive is the biggest thing. It was going to make for an interesting restart if they were going to go right there. But these guys, you can see the higher line is going to be the one that these guys are going to choose for the time being. But you get to racing two and three wide, you can't always see that. So you kind of have to adjust and be ready for anything. Yeah, that's, that's the other thing. The speed, the, just the vision from that speedy drive is going to create a cloud for a lap or two. We are less than 90 laps away from crowning a champion. Seems like Carl Edwards pretty relaxed, but Clint uh, pins and needles <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, kind of up on the chip just a little bit. He's wanting everything to go his way. He's worked extremely hard to get himself and his race team in this position, and they want everything to be perfect whenever they go in these last 90 laps trying to win that championship. And Carl's got nothing to lose. You know, he was way behind, thought he was out of it. Here he is having a chance to, to win it. We mentioned Kyle Busch did not pit. What's the pit strategy there in the 18 car, Mike? Well, Doc, I climbed up to the pit box, talked to Joel Weidman. He seems to think the best strategy here is to save as many sticker tires as he possibly can for the end of this race. He has two sets available. Only 14 laps before this caution came out were on these tires. He wants to save these. So certainly wants to make the best of this. This could be his last race as a crew chief. Keep in mind, Jason Ratcliffe could come back at the beginning of 2009. If that happens, well, Joel Weidman thinks he'll just go back to the shop and become an engineer again. So he wants to go out on a very high note. Couldn't have a better note than that going out on a record-setting performance for Kyle Busch. Here he gets the green, and the fans are standing on their feet <laughs> to watch this thing getting into one. You can see all the speedy drive kicking up. That Boyer looking right out his front window at the guy that's been chasing him for the championship. Here goes Carl Edwards for second position. has right side tires on here should be a pretty good size advantage for a few laps here at least we'll see how this strategy works out for the 18 team i'm not sure that uh, having an extra set of tires late in this race is going to be an advantage because I almost uh, can't quite give up that track position for tires you think you, you just want to stay out front so uh you'd be reluctant to pit late anyway another caution is out See a piece of metal right there on the, on the uh, back stretch getting into three. Caution now for the uh, fifth time tonight. We've had five cautions now for a total of 24 laps. This should be a quick caution. They're going out here and grab this piece of metal. 28 car will get the free pass. Uh, and be able to get back on the lead lap, Kenny Wallace, and that will give us now 22 cars on the lead lap. Back at Homestead, Miami, Kyle Busch, the bottom of your screen, he is our leader and has now led 21 laps, and the, above him, the two points contenders, Carl Edwards and Clint Boyer, running in second and fourth position. The differential between those two now down to 36 points. Boyer has a slim lead, and now, but Carl Lever is going to try to get around that 18 car, make sure he can lead the most laps. Lots of motorsports yet to come your way later tonight, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, Automobile Club of Southern California NHRA qualifying. And then tomorrow we begin our coverage with NASCAR now at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. And then the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Ford 400 season finale. We will crown the NASCAR Sprint Cup champion here at Homestead, Miami, 3 Eastern Time on ABC. And then NHRA final, 7 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN2. And NASCAR now at 10 Eastern Time, wrapping up the whole weekend, the championship weekend here at Homestead, Miami Speedway. Getting set for the green flag. What a weekend for these drivers. Carl Edwards trying to win two titles. And by the way, in the uh, owner's championship, very tight battle among the three owners. Right now it is a virtual dead heat between the 20 and the two car. 20 car of Joe Gibbs Racing and the two car of Clint Boyer. That is for the owner's championship here in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Ace car pulls away. Kyle Busch will lead him down. And we'll see what Carl Edwards can do with him. He's going to try to make that jump. When Bush gets a nice jump. And we 
we've seen this all year long when Kyle Busch has been the leader. Really can get up through the gears and get that car stretched out a little bit for a little bit of a lead over Carl Edwards. Clint Boyer trying to get the third spot away from David Reagan. Remember Kyle Busch chasing history, trying to become the first driver to win 11 races in a single season. Now tied with the legendary Sam Ard. He tied Sam with his 10th victory just a couple of weeks ago at Texas. He's not going to be able to zoom by Kyle Busch. He's going to have to race a while. We've seen that even though Kyle Busch doesn't have new tires on. It's taken Carl Edwards a few laps for his car to really come around. I know he does have right side tires right here and has a little more advantage over Kyle Busch. Update Clint Boyer, Jamie. As he closes in on David Reagan in the sixth, Clint Boyer says, this is the best we've been. We're good, guys, as he drops to the low line. By far the best laps he has run tonight, and uh, Boyer starting back in 13th, worked his way eventually up to about seventh or eighth, but now the car with that two-tire stop for Boyer looking a lot better, much more consistent than he's been. Well, I think it's a whole combination. The racetrack cooling down. Uh, Clint got himself up in a lot better position where he doesn't have to deal with all of that traffic. I think that's the biggest thing, just by the pit strategy, getting him up front in the top five puts him in a lot more comfortable position mentally, and I think that's helping him on the racetrack too. Battle for fifth position, 30, 33 of Ryan Newman, 38 of Jason Leffler, and Denny Hamlin in the 32 car on the bottom of the racetrack. Teammates side by side. See Hamlin often for that low line, trying to make the pass. Got the fall back in line here. Eighth place behind him, the 17 car, Jamie McMurray. Roush Fenway car, and above him, all the way at the top of the racetrack, the 88 of Brad Keselowski. Brad's car seemed to be better whenever the sun was out. He doesn't seem to be quite as good. Might need an adjustment here on probably their next pit stop, which might would be their final one. The 66 is Stephen Wallace, by the way. He is the first car a lap down. He would get the lucky dog in the next caution flag. 47, Kelly Byers racing Joey Logano. That's for the 10th spot. By far the best performance that Kelly Byers has had this year, having to come from the back of the field after an engine change to run all the way up to second position. Bobby Hamilton Jr. in the solid black car, 25. He just got back on the lead lap through the lucky dog. And a little pit strategy's got him up front here a little bit. He's racing right here with these guys on the lead lap. Comes Scott Wimmer. If you're not familiar with the story in the 25 car, that team was going to shut down, and Bobby Hamilton Jr. said, I'm going to write my own checks out of my checkbook to keep this team going to get us to the end of the year. And it's cost him a lot of money, but he did not want to quit. He wanted to be able to run the full season and then hope to find something for 2009. Well, this is the way to do it. Just race as hard as you can. He's running 13th. If he can get him a good, solid top 10 finish uh, to finish the season out, that would make him feel pretty good about his decision to spend his own money to uh, keep racing. Nine car you see there, Chase Miller, he's a lap down. But uh, not running bad, got lapped earlier. 75 laps to go here in the season finale at Homestead Miami Speedway. Closing in on crowning a NASCAR Nationwide Series champion. Let's uh, let Nationwide take you up to speed, beginning with our leader, Kyle Busch. Mike. Well, Doc, at times the 18 and Kyle Busch has made it look real easy, but it has not been as easy as it looks this weekend. Before the green flag wave today, they weren't really sure what they had. They struggled a little bit in practice. In fact, had to change shocks four times. They were really relying on Kyle's ability to dial that race car in. They called him the difference maker and thought that he'd be able to find the right balance in that race car to get him to victory lane. It looks awfully good right now, Dave. Mike, the 60 team hopes this race car will be a difference maker for them. It served them well, a win at Michigan, a fourth place at Charlotte, and most recently, second place at Texas Motor Speedway. But Drew told me that this car needed a suspension change from Texas, more like the one they had at Charlotte. Smooth racetracks, Charlotte and Homestead, Miami, and this one adapted much better to this racing service. 
And behind Carl Edwards, his teammate is David Reagan. Running third right now, his best finish at this track in two starts is 31st. I talked to the team today and said, well, are you guys going to help Carl Edwards out? They said, we know that's our teammate. We know he's going for the championship, but we have our own sponsors and our own agenda. And when it comes down to it, we're going for the win. Behind David Reagan, your points leader right now, Clint Boyer, as I reported moments ago, he said this is the best the car has been. He's happy with it. This is the best position he has had since the start of the race. Running fourth right now, remember Clint Boyer, this is his third chance at getting this championship. He's never won a championship in NASCAR. Shannon? Jamie, Denny Hamlin has four wins in the Nationwide Series this season, but all of those wins have come in Joe Gibbs Racing cars. The best he's finished in this 32 car is second, and he has two second place finishes. So he would love to get a win here tonight. The race started off tight for Denny Hamlin, but the car has definitely come around on that last pit stop. It was just two tires for this 32 car, but all things are good right now for Denny Hamlin. Mike? Shannon, on the first lap of final practice, the 38 car slapped the wall, pancaked the right side. They missed the rest of practice. Because of that, they weren't really sure how good they'd be in race trim. At the beginning of this race, Leffler came over the radio and said, we're way too loose. In fact, we're turning right more than we're turning left. Well, that was a while ago. Since the sun has gone down, the car has come to life, and Leffler feels pretty good about it. Another guy who feels pretty good about the turnaround in his car, well, that's Jamie McMurray. At the beginning of the race, he described it as, quote, junk. Not too long ago, in fact, just about 10 laps ago, though, he said, guys, we're pretty good. Brad Keselowski, well, that car has gone in the opposite direction. They started off pretty good, but in the meantime, well, it seems like it's gotten worse as the sun has gone down. They're running the high line, but it has not really worked all that well for him. He's still pretty loose. Needs that car to be just a little bit more snug, Jamie. And Ryan Newman running the 33 for Kevin Harvick Incorporated for the first time in the Nationwide Series. Why? Because they're really good friends. Remember back in 2005, Ryan Newman upset the field when the championship was on the line? It was him who went on to get the victory. Car's been okay. It's been tight most of the night. They're telling him right now to turn off all of his fans to try to get to the front where he was leading just moments ago. Jamie, with all the driver swapping that Joe Gibbs Racing has done this year, the question might be why not put race leader Kyle Busch in this car, the 20, and let the rookie Joey Logano run the 18 this weekend. Well, J.D. Gibbs told me we've had confidence in this guy ever since we offered him to run either ride. They knew they were going to go for the owner's championship in the 20 car, and J.D. says he with confidence said, I would like that pressure. I would like to run it. I'm up for the challenge, and everything he's done this year so far, he's performed. They have retaken that owner's championship lead within this race. It's gone back and forth, and they expect Joey Logano to be able to seal the deal this year. You can see it's fluctuating right now, down to three points, and Logano trying to hold on. He gave Joe Gibbs Racing a championship in the Camping World East Series a year ago, now trying to hold on to give him a NASCAR Nationwide Series owner's title. And again, the 47 car, uh, Kelly Byers, a 23-year-old from Wisconsin, just doing a heck of a job here in his final race of the year. He's really just having a great run from the back of the pack. Had to start back there because of that engine change. But, man, he has really made a nice charge in the front. Now, here's what's evolving in the championship story. Because Kyle Busch is leading laps like you predicted, DJ, he has now led more laps than Carl Levers. And if Carl Levers doesn't lead the most laps or win the race, that means Clint Boyer only has to finish 14th or better to win the championship. So maybe the pressure is moving now to Carl Edwards. Kyle Busch has now led twice for 43 laps here at the Ford 300 at Homestead Miami Speedway. Aerial coverage brought to you by our good friends at Goodyear. Get there on silent armor technology with the strength of Kevlar for toughness and a comfortable ride. Here's a look at our Holiday Inn Express race summary. There have been eight different leaders thus far tonight. Nine lead changes. Right now, Kyle Busch has led the most laps. Average speed just over 116.3 miles an hour. Still got 22 cars back on the lead lap. That's important because our, both of our championship contenders there, cars getting back there could move someone back if they have trouble. We have run a total of 27 laps under caution and been stopped had seven cars that have gone back to the garage area. Here are the point separation right now. 41 points separating Carl Leverage. It was 56 when the day began. Clint Boyer trying to hold on to uh, get his first ever major NASCAR series title.
Doc, down here in the pit studio, just been sitting here looking at Kyle Busch. Remember when he did not stop under the caution of lap 103, we all talked about how that might have been a disadvantage for this team. But it took them 11 laps of yellow to clean up all that oil dry and mess down the front straightaway. And as uh, Ray, Rusty, and Brad and I have been noodling around the numbers, that might have put this 18 car into a fuel window on equal terms with everybody else. That agree with what you guys are seeing up there? Yeah, it, Alan, it does put him in the window. The only thing is he'll have to pit a, a quite a bit earlier uh, than the guys that pitted under that last caution. So that'll put him in a position uh, a vulnerability should the caution come out. But yes, he is in a window. That did help him a lot, those caution flag laps. Uh, I expect to see him in here between 145 and 150. And uh, the other guys won't have to make a pit stop for about another 20, 25 laps. And that's exactly what Carl Edwards is hoping to be able to get that 18 car on pit road so he can lead some more laps and maybe be able to make his stop under caution. 21 car, Scott Wimmer. And the 33 car of Ryan Newman, they are battling for 10th and 11th spot. We're here now that with all these caution flag laps we've had, it extends their range out to, for about another 10 laps, about 152 is when we expect to see them. We talked about the fact that the 60 car now has not led the most laps in the race to this point. He has uh, now led 16 fewer laps than Kyle Busch. So let's just poll our drivers and crew chief and experts about what the 60 car, Carl Edwards, has to be able to do now running in second spot to get up and have a shot at this championship over the two of Boyer back in fourth. Well, there's not much he can do except try to get the lead. And obviously Kyle Busch is setting a toward pace. He has been able to beat Kyle Busch here for about the last five laps uh, as far as lap times go. So he's closing it back in. He's a little under three seconds back. But as long as Clint Boyer is going to continue to do his job, it's not going to matter what Carl Edwards uh, does. Carl Edwards can't place five cars, ten cars between him and Clint Boyer. Uh, that's not, not in his power. But we see here, that's one spot right there. Brad Keselowski passes Clint Boyer. Well, we've seen that the, uh, the 60 car is a little bit better on long run, so he's got to hope that Kyle Busch has to pit and then he can stay out there and lead more laps and at the end of the day lead more laps than the, than, than the 18 because that seems to be his main competition because right now it looks like the further we run, the more that two car drops back. Uh-oh. We got a caution, boys. This is going to change a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think that's going to change everything right now. This guy's just going to come down, put four tires on, and just back. probably drive these babies to the end. One thing we got to be careful with, remember last night in the truck race, 10 laps to go, Benson stayed out, won the championship. Ron Hornaday pitted and lost it. So that's going to be some strategy coming late. Caution for the sixth time, debris on the racetrack, and uh, this is not what Carl Edwards wanted to see. He wanted to be able to get the 18 car, I guess, off the racetrack and get some laps led, but maybe he'll have a shot to get some tires, get this thing dialed up. Yeah, they were hoping they could go long enough to at least get the 18 car on pit road. If this would have happened about five or ten more laps, that's exactly what would have happened, and they would have been able to catch that 18 a lap down. But uh, right now he's going to have to race it, race for the win with Kyle Busch. We see right here 66 car Stephen Wallace getting a free pass. Now 23 cars back on the lead lap. Well, pits are open. Let's see if they're going to make a move. And indeed, uh, here they come. Peeling off there in turn three on the access road. So put everybody inside of windows where they can make it to the end of the race on fuel. This might be the money stop, and it might be the championship money stop. Well, those guys on the two team just have to make sure they do a good, solid job right here. They, don't, they can't afford any type of mistake right now. Kyle Busch coming down will lead him at 45 miles an hour. He's chasing history. Everyone's chasing him on pit road. Mike. Doc, Crew Chief Joe Weidman said before the race the most difficult part of his job is making the last minute decisions on how to change the car. He says he leaves those decisions predominantly in the hands of Kyle. Kyle made the call this time. He said the car is so good. I don't want you to change a thing. Just four tires and fuel. Championship point leader Clint Boyer in the two cars said, I don't want any changes. They made a call for four tires this time, but one can of Sunoco fuel. Let's see if they can get this money stop. You can see him behind Carl Edwards, Dave. Snug center, free on throttle, wedge adjustment, tape on the grill, drink for the driver, tear up, race off, pit road, 60 and 18. The 18's going to get him. Kyle Busch maintains his position. Edwards, and you see Boyer gains a couple of spots. They did a really nice job getting on the left side of that two car. You want to talk about a, a money stop? That was a money stop for the two car. They came in there, no, all this pressure, and gained two spots. Watch the 18 guys. Yes, sir, buddy. Got him out front. 
There's the race off the 18. Kyle Busch held his position. Edwards, great job by the two bunch as well, gaining a couple positions. A race for the title when we come back. Getting set for the green flag here at Homestead Miami Speedway. 52 laps to go. Kyle Busch on and off pit road in a hurry. Carl Edwards second. And what about the job the two guys did a moment ago to gain a couple spots in the pits for Clint Boyer? It's definitely a pressure stop. This team right here ready to win this championship. They go out there and execute their jobs perfectly under a lot of pressure. Right here, every single one of these guys are focused. He's, he's happy for that, too. Glad to see that. Champions rise to the challenge and deal with the pressure. A great job by Clint Boyer's bunch. Kyle Busch trying to get his 11th win in a single season to become the all-time record holder for NASCAR, passing Sam Ard. Carl Everts has 52 laps to somehow get up there, lead some laps, and hope the two-car will slide back so he can win a title. And Clint Boyer, if he can stay right where he is and nothing changes, he will become the NASCAR 2008 Nationwide Series champion. We heard Clint call for no changes on his car. I think that he's gotten himself in a good position here. His car is pretty comfortable to him, and he knows exactly what he needs to do. He's making it happen. Boy, David Reagan making something happen right here. It's been a good solid day. He has had a great day. I, he might even have a car that's uh, I thought for a while there he was going to be capable of winning this thing. He can make up a lot of ground in a hurry. Reagan back in fourth position as Brad Keselowski were riding along with the fifth place car. The lap car, the 12 car, Justin Allgaier, he's going by. Wow, Reagan's way up high and got in the wall oh. right in front of Brad Keselowski. And Reagan is slowing as cars Clear. go by. No coming inside. Just when we were bragging on it. We're trying to get back to work, keep digging, get underneath the lap car. Marcus Ambrose in the sandwich now. It looks like he's got a lot of damage. He just got up there and kind of kissed the wall as he went through the corner. He just lost four positions now. He's trying to hang on and not lose any more with the 32 car of Hamlin back in eighth position. have a slight tire rub on the six. See a car there, the five car. We haven't talked much about that's Dale Jr. in the car, but he's been hanging around just outside the top 10 most of the race. We saw David Raiden digging pretty quickly on the restart and making passes, and then he just couldn't quite hold it. He's hard in the gas. We saw this happen to Jeff Burton, who was a little further away, and then Jeff's car got away from him. But David got away with just minimal damage there. Going back at it here. Here's Junior trying to make up some spots. Junior on the move. Dale Junior talking in the media center yesterday that this five car would probably run a limited schedule seven races in 2009 with an all star cast of drivers himself, maybe his teammate Jimmy Johnson, Mark Martin will be in that car. Now run the 88 car, the other car, full time with Brad Keselowski. Let's update Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s uh, status. Jamie. Well, they made some changes throughout the night, but they went back to the way they started. Dale Jr., of course, glad to be behind the wheel of his five car. Never won for his own team. Now, this team, guys, have had to let 17 people go because of cutbacks because this team is only going to run right now seven races in 09. They said after this race, two more of their road guys will have to be let go. Guys, unfortunate circumstances, but what a win would do for them tonight. Be very important for him trying to attract sponsorship to run more events in 2009. There's the two car, Clint Boyer now being closed in on by Jason Leffler. That's for fourth spot. And that's what Boyer can't afford to have happen now. Start having people going by him, losing positions on the racetrack. He can afford one spot or two here, but uh, he's not going to get too panicky if just one or two cars passing. But now, if some of them start lining up behind him, he'll get nervous. Yeah, 
Paul Edwards only got one more spot he can gain. If he doesn't get there quickly, he's not going to be able to lead the most laps. He needs to take this lead away as soon as he possibly can. I think Clint's just got himself in a good position. The 38 car is there, but you can see it's quite a ways back to the, the next car, who now is the 20 car, Joey Logano. So I think Clint's okay. And again, the status on clinching here, unless Carl Edwards can get there in a hurry and lead the most laps and win the race, all Clint's got to do is finish 14th. The owner's title up for grabs coming in. It was a 28-point lead by the 20 car of Joe Gibbs Racing entering the day. And right now, the margin is 23 points with that 20 car of Joe Gibbs. Looks like David Reagan's in the wall again here. May have had a tire rub there after that first scrape with the wall, and now it's cut it down. Right front cut. Jamie? Guys, after he brushed the wall the last time, we asked the team. They said they thought the tires were okay, but they thought the toe was knocked out, so perhaps that led to him hitting the wall once again. One of our rookie contenders also slowing on the racetrack. He's, he's been in the wall also. You can see the right side damage. He was running in the top 10. Brian Clawson. Show you what happened to him a moment ago. Top of your screen. It's basically the same thing David Reagan did earlier, just gets up against the wall. And here's Reagan's second contact after the one he had three laps ago. This one is the one that brought out the yellow flag. He had a tire go down, I'm sure. It doesn't take much of a tire rub to cut the sidewall of one of these tires, and uh, that earlier scrape probably did that. Brian Clawson will be pushed back to the garage area after coming in, hoping to be able to gain on Landon Castle in the Rebestos Rookie of the Year standings. Kyle Busch, a 10-time winner in 2008, hoping to be able to make NASCAR history by picking up his 11th victory. He is 42 laps away. Reminder tomorrow, the NASCAR Sprint Cup will be awarded most likely to Jimmy Johnson at the conclusion of the Ford 400 here at Homestead Miami Speedway. The chase for the Sprint Cup concluding it is at 3 Eastern time on ABC starting with NASCAR countdown. Jimmy, of course, trying to tie Cale Yarbrough as the only drivers to win three consecutive championships in 60 years of NASCAR Cup history. Uh, about set to go racing, Brian Clawson behind the wall. Shannon? And Brian Clawson was looking for that rookie of the year, started this race six points behind Landon Castle. Can you tell us what happened out there? Yeah, you know, we, uh, our motor department does a great job, and uh, we don't hardly ever have any failures. And it was kind of weird. I got up top there and uh, really hadn't been sputtering or anything, and it, it uh, let go when we got up in the wall and uh, you know, switched boxes and everything, see if it, if it flicked back on, but uh, it didn't. So uh, I think there was, there was something worse. So I um, hate it for all my guys. They gave me a good car, and uh, you know, we kind of went the wrong way on adjustments there when it went got dark, and uh, I was trying to get back to, to running up front, but uh, you know, it was a tough day for us. And we'll have to wait till after the race to see how this DNF affects those Rookie of the Year standings. Doc? Shannon, they just evaluate the top 17 starts for the season, so they go back after this race and look at he and Landon Castle and see which one will end up with the most points. Landon Castle had a six-point lead coming into this race, and I did not race here in the finale. Well, 40 laps to go, and right now Kyle Busch has led 33 more laps than Carl Edwards, so if Carl's going to lead the most laps, he's going to have to get there right now and get around this 18 car. Not that he hasn't been trying the last 35 laps to get there. He's been working hard. He did a good job on that restart, but still Kyle Busch pulled out a pretty good sizable advantage on the when he got to turn one. Kyle Busch is just so good at those restarts and everything, really. I mean, he executes well on the racetrack. Eric McClure in the 24 car back on the racetrack as you watch the 38 going in the middle and trying to get around the two. That is four position. That's for four spot. Boyer will hold him off. Jason Leffler wanting that spot, though. He's working hard. He said, now, come on, man. You got a lot to lose. Let me have that spot. You're <laughs> not supposed to be racing me this hard. That's how Clint Boyer got in this position, racing hard, just like he is right here. 
Ty got a chance to be able to get in this series. Clint Boyer ran an ARCA car at Nashville. Richard Childress saw him, got a cell phone number, called him at a body shop in Emporia, Kansas, and said, boy, come over here. I want to talk to you about driving a race car. And the rest, as they say, is history. Clint Boyer got a chance to go drive for one of the legendary owners. And tonight, if he can hold on 37 more laps where he is, he will become NASCAR's newest champion. He's had a good, solid year. He's done everything that he needs to do to, to win a championship. He's been there. He's run well. Obviously, he's been in victory lane. So it's not like they've backed in anything. They've been there and led the, the championship battle for quite a long time. They won one race only thus far this year. That was at Bristol, Tennessee. In fact, this is the exact car they used to go to victory lane. So inappropriate that they would use that car to try to go to the championship stage here after Homestead Miami tonight. Double zero and 47 car, pretty good battle here. 11th position, Kelly Byers. And the double zero, we keep talking about the talent of Josh Wise and just this young, everybody, every time you talk about what this, this young man could do, the double zero, people say this, he has got a very bright future. Yeah, it really does. A lot of talent. Just needs some more seat time. That, that's really all that uh, he needs to, to become a really good driver and, and get ready to challenge for, for uh, victories here. Hey, Carl, Carl Edwards, Edwards. he's coming now. I'm telling you, he got a big runoff of turn two. Made a lot of ground on Kyle Busch that last lap. And finally seen him move around on the racetrack a little bit more here to change. You, I think you realize trying to run in the tracks of Kyle Busch wasn't going to get him where he wanted to go. And that's to the lead. Kyle Busch has now clinched the most laps led, so now Carl Edwards can't do that, but he's going to have to do everything he can to try to win this race. I don't, I don't think Kyle Busch's car is as good as it was that last run. I don't know one thing. I know that Carl Edwards got him pushing a little bit. You can see the back end kick out. Carl Edwards going to the inside now, trying to make the move. He's got it. 34 to go, mark it down. Yeah. Cousin Carl is the leader here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Here comes Kyle Busch back on the bottom of the racetrack. You know, Carl needs to win this race, but Kyle Busch wants to win it. He wants to make history. He wants to win that 11th race. So these guys are going to race hard for this win. Carl Edwards holds on to win this race. The clinch position for Clint Boyer would be ninth. And uh, what brought this car to alive, uh, Dave? Well, Doc, just before the last round of pit stops, Carl said, where my car is now, I just need to happen a little bit earlier. And the piece of tape that front tire carrier Michael Riggs puts on the car right there may have helped it. That was one change. The wedge adjustment was another, and that got this car quicker sooner. Remember, they said they were great in the long run. They needed to be better in the short run. Unfortunately, they missed the possibility of most laps led by just a couple of laps. But finally, the 60 car is alive. It's the little things that make a difference, Dave, and that little piece of tape can make a difference on the racetrack. Wow, a four-inch piece of duct tape giving you a shot to win a championship. And there's the separation. Carl Evers, the leader, the two-car Boyer back in fourth spot. He can finish ninth or better if Everett wins and still be the champion. Less than 30 laps to go at Homestead Miami Speedway. There's the points leader, Clint Boyer, losing a position, but he's battling back and forth with the 38 car of Jason Leffler, and they have nearly come into uh, to contact a couple of times here. They have really been battling this thing out. It's making me a little nervous for Clint because uh, he has a lot to lose in this battle. I'll tell you what, when he gets laid down tonight and thinks about how he won this championship and all that it took, it's just not has come. It's just not come easy, even down here to the last 40 laps of of the race. Hey, we got some guys closing on this group too. You see Denny Hamlin right there in that yellow car coming. Joey Logano. Now again, Carl Edwards currently leads the Ford 300, so Boyer has to finish ninth or better. There is Edwards up front with 25 laps to go. Clint Boyer can only lose four positions if Edwards wins the race, or he'll lose the championship. He's got some fast cars coming in his mirror. He needs to just stay calm right here. And he's got a great spot up there, Mike Dillon, to try to keep him calm. 
We've got 24 laps to close this deal. And these guys gained on him a little bit because of when Boyer and Leffler were side by side there. But Clint didn't want to just back out and get those guys up on his bumper because then he's got those guys to deal with. So he's got himself in a pretty good position right here. As long as his car doesn't go away from him, he probably really doesn't want to see a caution come out. He's in the perfect spot here right now. So he's just telling, all right, boys, everybody play nice and everybody will be happy. <laughs> good luck Especially with that. Yeah. <laughs> got to wonder how hard it is to breathe your Clint Boy right now, knowing how long you have wanted this and how hard you have worked. He has led the points, folks, since the first week of March, 29 consecutive weeks. He's got a green light here, too. He can run as hard as he wants to. They should have plenty of fuel to make it, as will all the cars. So they just can race it out on the racetrack. All of these cars need to pass Clint Boyer for Carl Edwards to have a shot at winning this title. Look at one of those cars. That's a 21. Yeah. And who owns that one? <laughs> Richard Childers. Yeah. Same guy that owns a two car, right? Same guy. <laughs> Dell Jr. in the five, he has made it up into the top 10 here, running eighth right now, closing in on Joey Logano in the 20. There's Kelly Byers in the 47 car. Great run for him today from the back of the pack. Your ass off here. We don't know yellow car can catch us, but we don't need to catch us until about eight to go. That's Mike Dillon talking to Clint Boyer, the spotter. Now that's the guy right here that has to get by Clint Boyer to get him back to 10th spot to change this championship complexion. Who'd have thought that the guy that started dead last in the race, Kelly Byers, could determine the championship here in the final 20 laps? Update the two, Jamie. Great run for Kelly Byers indeed, but Clint Boyer, you guys talking about Richard Childress racing. Little more emphasis on winning this championship. Why? This is Clint Boyer's third attempt at it ever, and it could be his last. Next year, they don't have sponsorship secured for this two car. He will share the ride in the 29. Marcos Ambrose, you guys see on your monitor right there, slowing up, guys. And we are still green, Jamie, and that is very, very critical to Clint Boyer. Caution flag to tighten the field up could really hurt him. But we have not gone yellow. We are staying green with 20 to go. Not only could it tighten things up, but it could make things very interesting as to who might come and get tires. And, you know, Clint decided to stay out there and all the guys right behind him come and get tires. It would be a tough position. That's a good break for Clint Boyer, in my opinion, that that caution did not come out. That was close, too, because that car hit the wall pretty hard. It was tire strategy here last night that actually determined the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Championship for Johnny Benson by a mere seven points over Ron Hornaday. 21 car, Scott Wimmer going by the 20 of Joey Logano. That is for position. That's for seventh spot. Joe Gibbs car number 20, still a 20 point bulge in the owner's championship position over the two car, despite the fact that the two car is ahead of him on the racetrack. There's the differential. Jack Roush was 84 points back, just back to 41 now with Carl Edwards leading the race. NASCAR just said the track is clear from that last little brush in the wall, uh, Marcus Ambrose. So we'll stay green. 18 to go here. It'll be 17 as Carl Edwards goes by the start finish line one more time. He's done everything pretty much that he can do. He hasn't not going to lead the most laps, but he's had a good solid day. He's got himself in position to win the race. But Clint Boyer is also doing what he needs to do to win the championship. You know, it's tough coming in with a point lead as far as pressure is concerned. But having 56 points to your advantage is a big thing right here with 17 laps to go. You got a little bit to give right here. And remember what these guys did a week ago at Phoenix, coming in and putting on four tires and then driving that car back in the final few laps from seventh to be able to gain spots all the way to fourth. Every position counted last week on that daring call by the crew chief to get him in, Dan Deeringhoff. You'll go back and look at a lot of races where you won or lost a championship. Uh, there's so many things like that. That's a, that was definitely a turning point for Clint. Yeah, I thought when they got in the accident on the front stretch on the restart that their day was going to be looking at outside the top 15, uh, which would have obviously closed things up tremendously. But Clint did a great job of driving that car, keeping his composure and, and doing what he had to do. Let's check in and visit with Marcus Ambrose. Shannon. Well, Marcus Ambrose was solidly in the top 10 coming into this race. Can you tell me what happened out there, Marcos? Oh, we just popped a right front tire there. We got some better damage early, went a couple laps down. 
just trying to circulate survive, but I, I brushed the wall again, eventually I popped it. And you know, Marco Sambros will definitely be watching those points as he goes back to his hauler right now. Guys, there's no secure spot for Marco Sambros in this Nationwide Series not, uh, next season, but he will go cup racing next year. Another one of the drivers that's had a great year in NASCAR Nationwide. Of course, uh, got his first win at Watkins Glen and going to run full time in the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Looks like he'll finish in the top 10 in points regardless. He's had a good year. And he's got another points battle on his hands tomorrow, though, with his cup car trying to keep it in the top 35. So he's assured a spot when they get to the Daytona 500 in February. Denny Hamlin uh, trying to move underneath Clint Boyer to take a spot away. That would be the fifth spot. The spot is really no problem for Clint if he just gives it up and doesn't let it rattle him. He just doesn't need to keep his cool right here. Joey Logano losing a position, possibly by the 47. That closes up that owner's points a little bit. Now he hasn't quite got that spot yet. Myers coming back and uh, will he thread the needle there? Yeah, the 0-1 car, Danny Eflin on the inside. See if Kelly Byers can, whoops, they nearly touch. Kelly said, I know you're trying to win an owner's title, but man, I'm trying to get a job. I want to be able to run full time next year and get some sponsorship on my car. Closing in on 10 laps to go, Carl Edwards is our leader, Dave. And remember, Doc, you talk about he doing everything he, that he can do this weekend and in this race. Remember, this was the second half run for this team. Drew Blickenstrupper did not join this team until the 17th race in at Milwaukee. And it was only after that that they got all six of their 2008 wins. The first half of the season, a couple of failures to finish, some subpar performances. And that's why they came in here with a deficit. But they have fought back and gotten it close here as we came to Homestead. Great battle right side of your screen. Look at Wimmer coming all the way up there, trying to move to the inside of the 32 car. And that's for position. The only problem is if Wimmer were to hit the 32, he's going to bounce off the two, and that that's totally changed things. You saw him back off the throttle right there because they were in a really tight spot. Three wide is not where Clint Boyer needs to be at this point in the race. Woo. No, definitely not. I'm sure Clint looking over there and saying, what are you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he might have said some variation. Yeah, of that. something like that. <laughs> Ten to go. Clint Boyer trying to hold on. The margin is 21 points. Ten Carl to go. Ten to go. These 10 laps cannot go by quick enough for Clint Boyer. I got to believe Clint Boyer's pulse sounds like a machine gun right now. You know, you've also seen Denny Hamlin there back out. He, he knows what's going on here, too. He didn't press the issue anymore. Here's the leader, Carl Edwards. Let's listen in. Caution on the racetrack, and oh my! What are we gonna do here? <laughs> oh my goodness! Whoa! I'm glad I don't have out. to make the stay decision. Out. Tell him to stay out, Dylan. That was a crew chief telling Clint Boyer to stay yeah, out. Uh, close right now. Pull around over here. The leaders come out forward. It's like the 12 car Justin Allgaier got in the walls but brought the caution out. Oh man! Well, then there was life for Roush Fenway. Jack I'll Roush knows that all he was a shot. Here's the problem with Clint Boyer. He stays out in fifth. If everybody comes behind him, this could put him in a really bad situation. And a lot of these guys still have a set of tires left, at least right side, I think, that they're going to come get. This is a tough call, man. I'm glad I'm not on that box. Well, I was getting ready to ask <laughs> what would you do? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, really, I would like to pit, but then you take yourself to put yourself in a position of losing it. Uh, this is a tough, tough call for this team. We'll put tires on it. I don't think he's going to. I didn't hear him. It's all. If the 60 comes, we'll come. He's on it. Yeah, this is all going to be dependent on what the 60 does. No, I would stay. Just stay there. We'll be okay. Y'all do what you want to do. It's okay, here, here comes the cars behind. Okay. Kyle Bush came in. 32 comes Logano. Nope. They all, boy, this is a tough decision by a lot of guys. 
The ones that stayed on the track is what's going to help Clint Boyer. Others oh, did I not see Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch come but back through the grass. Because he went back on the track, did he not? It's hard to see from our vantage point here. Yeah, there's the 18. Back behind Carl Edwards in the second spot. So you have to make this commitment right here before you Once get you to the grass. If he goes out before the grass, uh, he, he just got back. Yeah, takes we it back out. Yeah, we took the camera off there. Fool me, I didn't take much of the, the rest of the guys. I honestly thought some of these other guys would come in. All right, seven laps to go. Let's talk to Carl Edwards. Carl, Dale Jarrett, ESPN, you got me? I got you, Dale. Well, man, you've done everything you could possibly do to win this championship. Yeah, you know, it's not, uh, it sure isn't over, man, but uh, it's not just about tonight. It's the whole season, and, uh, you know, we'll just do the best we can tonight. We'll see what we get, but definitely have a good time. To save a lot of confusion. It's good, man. Uh, definitely have a good time, but I'm sure this isn't what Clint wanted to see. We really needed this restart, even if it uh, you know, hurts our chance to win the race. It's going to add a little drama, I hope. Well, I think you're exactly right, Carl. And instead of another question, I just want to say thanks uh, on behalf of everyone at ESPN and all the fans out there for you being so gracious. As many times as you've done this all year, answered the questions as you've been in the, the heat of the battle for this. And uh, uh, we just appreciate uh, what you've done for us and for our sport. Hey, man. It's my pleasure. Uh, just glad you folks get to ride along with me. It's uh, pretty cool to be able to talk to everybody at home from your race car. That's neat. So hope you guys enjoy the show. We've enjoyed it. Good luck. What a great champion he has been. He is the reigning NASCAR Nationwide Series champion, a six-time winner this year in this series. Eight wins in the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Still has an outside shot, a slim, but an outside shot of becoming the NASCAR Sprint Cup champion here uh, on Sunday. And there's the two car back in the fifth position again the scenario he has to finish ninth or better in order to become the champion now the car Dylan, make sure the guys behind us know what the deal is clint making sure everybody in spotters getting all of those other spotters up there telling them to make sure what's going on you know that the thing there's a couple of issues here clint boyer he has to make sure that he gets up through the gears he doesn't want to spin the tires give opportunities for guys to start filing by and get himself in position there to, to get passed by a number of cars. The key thing in this whole deal was he was running fifth. If everybody behind him pitted got tires, he'd be in big trouble. There's a lot of cars that stayed on the racetrack behind Clint Boyer. I think that's going to give him plenty of buffer here to get to bring this thing home. Shannon? Yeah, guys, while that 21 car Scott Wimmer certainly wants to go to victory lane, he ju did just come over the radio, told his crew chief to tell Clint Boyer, don't worry, I'll give him plenty of room on this restart. Just a teammate looking out for that championship contender wanting to get Clint Boyer his first championship. Last night, the championship was decided by seven points. Folks, uh, if Everidge wins a race, stays where he is, and Boyer were to finish ninth, Boyer would win the title by four points. Ten months, 34 races, and four points separating the top two in a championship. Doesn't get much better than that here at NASCAR. One thing you need to worry about is this restart. Just like you said, Dale, last couple of weeks has been kind of hairy. We saw that last week at Phoenix where they uh, just kept piling them up on the restarts. That's the last thing Clint Boyer wants to see now. Yeah, the good thing for Clint is he can give a little bit of room to Jason Leffler in front of him, and he's got his teammate right behind him who's going to give a little bit of room there just in case something should happen. So Clint's in a pretty good spot right here. I, I'm like you, though. I'm really surprised that more of those cars didn't come in back there and uh, try to take advantage of a situation like that to really gain some spots. Again, up front, remember, and it's not just about the championship there. Carl Edwards wants to get his seventh win of the year, but the guy behind him, Kyle Busch, wants history. He wants to be in the history books as the winningest driver in a single season in the 27-year history of this series. Yeah, is there anybody better on these restarts to get going and go fast for a few laps? Than, I mean, he obviously, he's done it a lot this year. It's a lot on the line here yeah. for this last little bit. you got guys that want to win races, win championships. Uh, owners championships there's a lot on the line right here these last five laps this is way it should happen here in nascar it comes down to the final laps on the final race of the year we haven't said brad keselowski sitting there in third spot he's done a great job today but he hasn't won he's won races but he hasn't won on this type of track he'd love to do that here 
And the very first race they ever ran here in 1995 on the final lap, the driver who was running fourth in turn three, some guy <laughs> named Dale Jarrett, ended up winning a race at the top three in front of him. Just never know what will happen. You race to the end, and uh, some good may happen for you. Here we go. Carl Edwards pulls away. Boyer down on the bottom of the racetrack. There's his teammate, the 21 car, up high. Right in front of the 32. Got a bit of a buffer there. Looking good so far. Here comes Kyle Busch trying to get to the inside. Whoa. He was in the gas pretty hard right there, but a little too much it looked like. Three laps to go. Let's see if Kyle Busch can get him. Kyle Busch turns it hard left, takes his Toyota down in the low groove. Edwards up high with the Ford. There comes the 88 car digging hard in his Chevy. I think Carl Edwards moved his car to the middle top of the racetrack. That's when this race really changed for him. He was able to run Kyle Busch down, take the lead from him, and been able to hold that advantage. Two to go. Three miles away for Clint Boyer from a NASCAR championship. Two laps. You know, we've talked a lot in this scenario about Clint. It was kind of his to lose, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll give this man credit today. He went out here and won this championship. He had to drive hard, had himself in some tough positions early in the race, but he's able to, to really do a tremendous job. He's got one mile and a half left. Wide flag in one position moving up behind him. Shouldn't make much difference if he can hold on. Carl Edwards, the leader. Kyle Busch in second. Keselowski third. Leffler fourth. And Boyer trying to hang on to fifth spot. Half a lap away. Doesn't look like he, Kyle Busch is going to have anything for Carl Edwards in his final turns. Coming out of turn four, Carl Edwards will win the battle, but will not win the war. Edwards will win the race, and the 2008 NASCAR Nationwide Series champion is Clint Boyer. Congratulations, Clint Boyer. Oh, what a great year. Nothing feels better than winning a championship. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. That's what you work all year for. Congratulations to all of these guys. Richard Childress and that entire team. Dan Deering off the crew chief there congratulating his guys as the fireworks go off. Congratulate Carl there. Clint becomes the 20th different driver to win a championship in the 27-year history. <laughs> <laughs> Guys had a tough fight all year long. Still good buddies there. Yep, a little bumping and rubbing, a little congratulatory rub there. And here comes your owner's championship winner, the 20 car. Won it by 12 points. A lot of winners tonight. Sure it was. What a great season they put on for us. Just a great battle the entire way. What a charge Carl Edwards made here. Fans know what's coming next. Seventh time this year in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Here he comes. Oh, boy, that was perfect. Way to cap it off. Carl Edwards wins the race, and Clint Boyer wins the championship. What a night for fireworks here in South Florida. The season finale for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. The 2008 NASCAR Nationwide season is history, and there's the champion waiting very patiently for his car has been staged over in turn two because they're going to get the victory stage set up. And while we wait to talk with the champion, let's go down and talk with the race winner, Carl Edwards in victory lane. And Carl Edwards climbing victoriously from his machine. 
Wow, yet another victory. The way you ended the season with a flourish, but for this one, you had to hold off the hottest driver in the series this year, Kyle Busch. What was that restart like with him right behind you? Um, man, that's a great that's a great win. I mean, to be able to hold off the 18 as strong as they are, that's uh, that was a good race. I had a really good time. Congratulations to Clint and those guys. It's a class act. It's uh, it's no good to finish second in the championship, but I know he'll be a good uh, champion for Nationwide and. If I got to get beat by somebody, it's uh, a dirt racer from Emporia, Kansas is uh, is the best uh, best guy to get beat by. But save a lot, Scotts, um, World Financial Group, Under Armour, Ford Motor Company, especially the fans for uh, for showing up in such great numbers for these nationwide events. You made it incredibly exciting over the last month or so. Came up just 21 points short. How would you describe? the battle for this championship this year as it came down to this closing race. Well, one of the neatest things about this series, uh, you know, about the championship is it's different from the Cup Series. It's all season. You know, it's not it's not tonight that, that determine this championship. So we'll be back next year. I hope Clint comes back and uh, races with us. That'd be fun. And the great thing is I think we have a lot to look forward to. We've got a great team uh, both here and on the Cup side. And uh, there's no shame in giving it 100 percent effort and finishing second. That's the best we could do. Congratulations. Thank you. And Doc, he's still got another shot at yet another title. Needs a lot of help, but he could be the champion tomorrow. Carrying a lot of momentum into uh, this race tomorrow for the NASCAR Sprint Cup season finale. Clint Boyer will finish the year with one win, uh, 14 top five finishes, 29 top tens. But most importantly, he will have the designation NASCAR Nationwide Series champion. Let's go down and visit with his championship crew chief, Jamie. And that would be Dan Deeringhoff has made the calls upon that pit box for the last three years. Dan, eight to go. The caution flag drops. What was that moment like? Well, it was kind of an easy call because we didn't have a lot of tires left. Like we only had left side. So uh, Carl was saying he was coming. Like he's just trying to play a little game with us there on the radio. But, uh, you know, BBT Chevrolet ran real good. I can't say enough about these guys and uh, I mean the solid all year long uh, Clint Boyer. I mean he's a champion. That's pretty awesome. So I'm just glad to be a part of it. We know you're going to be the crew chief on the 29 next year. Clint will be only part time won't go for the championship. What has it been like this journey with Clint for the last three years to get to this championship. Uh, it's been it's been fun really it has uh, this is what we do this for and uh, you know next year we'll have three drivers and uh, maybe we can go get that owner's championship next year. All right. He's eagerly awaiting his driver. He hasn't made it to the front stretch yet. Dan Deeringhoff, Clint Boyer win by 21 points, Doc. The fourth closest margin in NASCAR Nationwide Series history. Clint Boyer on his way around now to climb out and be crowned NASCAR's newest champion. We'll talk with him when we come back. The Ford 300 at the Homestead Miami Speedway, brought to you by the all-new 09 F-150. It's not just a new truck, it's a new F-150. The champion has made his way around to begin the celebration with his team. Dave Burns is there. He's been waiting patiently over in turn two. Here's Carl to congratulate. Well, you rub fenders with him all year. He got the up sometimes. You got the up sometimes. But in the end, you are the champion. What was it like beating Carl Edwards this race this year? You know, we've uh, we've raced a long time. We're both from the Midwest. So he's a good competitor. He's last year's champion. It feels uh, really good to be able to beat him. Uh, you know, Dan Deeringhoff and all these guys in the bb and Chevrolet, they've just done a, a good job all year long. We've been consistent. We did the things it takes to win championships. Richard, you know, forgive me the opportunity. Uh, bb and t uh, Camping World, everybody involved, Chevrolet, Monte Carlo. How about that? Beat that Ford. So, uh, you know, just uh, incredible. I'm so excited for everybody. But you were a NASCAR regional champion, and now you're on the national stage. Got that phone call. How did we get here? <laughs> I have no idea, but, uh, you know, I think it's just Carl and I both are, uh, you know, um, uh, it just goes to show you that uh, the, the stepping stones that NASCAR has put forth for us uh, young drivers to come up through the ranks and have a shot at this can do it. Uh, we both were, you know, weekly racing champions, racing the regional championships, and, uh, you know, kids at home, uh, yeah, they should go for it. 
describe knowing when the caution came out that you had to be on pins and needles for a little while longer? No, oh, man, I was getting tight. Uh, you know, we just got real, real tight, and, and I really didn't want to see it, but, uh, you know, in hindsight, it, it worked out. I want to thank my teammates, everybody, uh, Kevin and, and Jeff Burton and, uh, you, you know, Wimmer right there at the end. He, he watched my back, and that's what teamwork's all about. Really hope Wimmer, you know, lands the ride. He deserves it. He's a hell of a race car driver. Clint Boyer is your 2008 Nationwide Series champion. Let's go to someone else who has something to celebrate as well. Shannon. All right, Dave. Joey Logano, 12 points, owner championship you have earned. Joe Gibbs racing their very first championship in the Nationwide Series. I got to ask you, what has the pressure been like this past week, knowing what you had to do here this weekend? Uh, it was uh, a lot of pressure, obviously. But, uh, you know, getting the pole earlier was a big plus and leading those laps in the beginning. It made me think we had a really good DLP Toyota. And uh, long run, we just weren't there. And, we tried to adjust it forward, and we just couldn't get it right. We were either really good in the beginning, really at the end. But uh, it's it's uh, awesome for this whole 20 bunch uh, to, to win this this race or win the championship. That's such a, a big deal, you know, going through the thick and the thin with these guys, uh, and then with Denny and Tony and Kyle driving the car and running up front winning races. That uh, helps out a lot. So uh, it's cool for these guys. I got think GameStop too. They uh, they helped a lot through this whole season. So there's uh, plenty of people I got to thank for this one. Yeah, what does it mean to be part of this organization, part of this title right now? You came in midseason. This team has been completely dominant. Dave Rogers, of course, watching you right now. What does it mean for you, Joey? It's awesome. Man. Like I said before, they work so hard back at the shop here at the racetrack. We're always, you know, the last one to go home at night, working on these cars, making a ton of laps in practice, doing what we got to do to make these things as good as we can. And uh, I'm glad that it paid off. Uh, got a little closer than I wanted it to, but, uh, you know, it's just awesome for these guys. You know, those are the guys who really deserve it. I only drove half the season. All right, Joey Logano's going to have to pull out that tuxedo because he is going to the championship banquet in Orlando. Mike? And Brad Keselowski ends the season on a relatively high note. Third place finish, but it seemed like the car was bottoming out three and four towards the end of that final run. Was that the difference for you? Yeah, I mean, every little bit counts. We're so close, you know. Uh, it just what a great year. What a great effort. Uh, had a great race here in Homestead. Great way to finish off the season. And uh, congratulations to Carl and Clint. And uh, Chevrolet winning the championship. That's cool. But uh, it's just been a great year. And uh, last race for me in the Navy. And uh, what a good way to end it. And it's been a great sponsorship. And, and just been great to represent all of them. So, uh, you know, just uh, can't say how thankful I am for everyone this year. Thanks, ESPN. Our pleasure. Yeah, it's been great. Coverage has been great. So uh, thanks, everyone. Well, thank you. Thank you. And Brad Keselowski ends on a high note. A couple of wins this year and a top three to go out, Jamie. And another high note, Jason Leffler finishes fourth, ties his best finish of the year, and some of the best racing we saw all night between you and the championship winner, Clint Boyer. What was it like, Jason? He wouldn't let up. No, and um, you, you got to be careful. You know, the, the guys in the great clip started to give me a great car, and um, just got racing Clint there, and, and you just don't want to be the guy that wrecks him and, and costs him championships. Same token, I don't, I don't think he could race me as hard as he wanted. So once I got position on him, he didn't race me really hard. So it's a good race, uh, good, good to end the season on a high note. Uh, we've had a terrible year, and not to be negative, but it's just we have, and, and to end it with our best run or best performance gets everybody through the winter and um, gives us the confidence that we can do this every week next season. Well, and the good news is Jason Leffler, this entire team staying intact. They will be back to run for the championship in 2009. Doc. Down here with second place finisher Kyle Busch. I know that you were looking for history here tonight, Kyle. Finished second, but this season has been unbelievable for you guys. How satisfying has it been to be a part of this organization and do what you have been able to do? Oh, it's been great. You know, the guys have done a phenomenal job all year long. And, you know, this was the first place that we unloaded a little bit behind and it kind of showed there, I guess, a little bit at the end. And, uh, you know, we had so many crutches built into this car to try to make it go fast. And it was fast, but... Um, you know, I don't know if the damage on the front end was a culprit there towards the end of the race, but it just went all of a sudden so tight, tighter than I'd been all night and didn't have anything to show for it, but uh, come up short. Now you see the celebration going on right now for the championship. There's speculation that you may go for a championship in the Nationwide Series next year. Any word on that? Can you, can you let us know what your plans are? I would have to ask J.D. I don't know anything yet. I'm not a part of that program, so I drive whatever they tell me to drive. All right, well, certainly if he does go for a Nationwide Championship, it will be a battle for that for that championship for Kyle Busch. All right, Shannon, thanks. So we've heard from the champion Clint Boyer. Now on stage, time for the presentation of the championship trophy. For that, let's go back to Dave Burns. And we are now down on the stage to make this all very, very official, joined by NASCAR's president, Mike Helton, who's going to congratulate our 2008 driver champion. Clint, congratulations. You guys, uh, you and RCR did a nice job this year, along with Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, to put on a heck of a program for the whole Nationwide Series. We're proud to have you as our 08 Nationwide Series champion, and congratulations from all of NASCAR. 
I appreciate it. Uh, it's a dream come true. It really is. Uh, you know, coming up, uh, Carl and I both, you know, race for a championship, came up through the stepping stones of NASCAR, and uh, that's what it's all about right there. So really proud. Thank you. Kudos to Clint and car owner Richard Childress, but finishing just ahead of him in the Owners Point Championship this year was the 20 team of Joe Gibbs Racing, and right now John Amon, Associate Vice President of Strategic Sponsorship for Nationwide Insurance, will present the trophy to J.D. Gibbs. John? So, J.D., on behalf of all of Nationwide, congratulations on a great season. This is excellent. Happy to present to you this trophy. Thank you. We appreciate Nationwide sub, sub, support so much, and a big hats off to, to all the guys on Richard's team, and Clint has a great finish there. And for us, it was just to have uh, Joey in the car, Danny in the car, you know, between Kyle and Tony, it was great to wrap up. It means a lot to us, and we sure will treasure this forever. Thank you. Great. Two champions crowned tonight on the big stage at Homestead Miami Speedway. Alan? All right, David, thank you. So the uh, award ceremony and the official presentation of the rings and the checks and all the rest of that happens next Saturday night in Orlando, Florida for Clint Boyer and his team and J.D. Gibbs and the 20 team and the final championship standings as we get a final thought from this 2008 season. Just a fantastic job for Clint Boyer. Now we can talk to Clint and call him champ. And it's got a nice ring to it. Outstanding. He led this thing from wire to wire. He dealt with the pressure. He reacted like a champion, responded like a champion, and he is the champion. And congratulations to Clinton, Richard, and everybody. We know that Clint's a great driver, but let's not forget about Dan Deerhoff and what those guys did last week at Phoenix. And then to take that car tonight, make it better, get him a good, crucial pit stop. I think that the championship team is right there, too. That was uh, outstanding, uh, outstanding season for all. Congratulations to all. Let's go upstairs. Doc, DJ, and Andy, a final thought? Well, what a, what a time for a performance for these guys here. The, the two car getting it done here, the last race of the year in a championship performance here on the night when they had to have it. Yeah, you see a difference with the Clint Boyer's team. They raced for this championship from day one. They'd only won one race, but they knew the big prize was right here on this stage tonight. Yeah, he did a terrific job. Everything that they had to do, and I think as they look back, there's going to be a lot of things that they can say, well, that made a difference. But last week, just like Ray said, at Phoenix, that was a great effort on their part. But the tremendous amount of pressure that you come into this last race, knowing what you have to do and going out and doing it, uh, my hat's off to Clint, a uh, great champion, going to be a great champion for the sport, and to Richard Childress, who's put so much into not only this nationwide series, but uh, in the Sprint Cup racing and all of NASCAR racing for a long time. A young man from the Midwest, from Emporia, Kansas who got a phone call five years ago from Richard Childress to give him a chance to come to NASCAR and tonight he realized a dream. Alan? All right, Doc, thanks. So two champions determined thus far this weekend here at Homestead Miami Speedway. The third set tomorrow in the Ford 400, the final race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Jimmy Johnson in position to well claim the title. Carl Edwards still with an outside shot at the championship. But, of course, Jimmy Johnson with a commanding lead and provided nothing really goes askew for him on Sunday. He will equal the great Cale Yarborough as the only driver ever to win three consecutive cup championships. History in the making here in South Florida on Sunday. Now, the trick to that is Jimmy starts 30th, Carl Edwards starts 4th. It should be some, some anxious moments in the early going. Uh, definitely some anxious moments early in the race. Being that far back in the pack like Johnson is, he's got to be real careful. I believe he can lock this thing up with no problem, but he can't mess up, and there's a chance that could happen. There's a hornet's nest going on back at the 35th <laughs> spot fighting for that 35th position, so there's going to be some tumultuous times around him. He's going to have to be really careful tomorrow. Carl's not worried about it. He's going to put an exclamation point on this season. He's going after the win. All right, so uh, one uh, one champion's trophy uh, held tonight by Clint Boyer. Johnny Benson crowned the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion last night. Tomorrow, most likely Jimmy Johnson with that third consecutive NASCAR Sprint Cup. And we will be here with uh, every bit of the action for you tomorrow, starting at 3 Eastern time on ABC. ESPN2 College Football Scoreboard is up next. Congratulations to Carl Edwards, winner of tonight's race. And there is Clint Boyer, your 2008 NASCAR Nationwide Series champion. It all started 10 months to go at Daytona. Crisscrossing the country all this time and when it came down to the final months of the season, Carl Edwards with a tremendous rally but consistent Clint running up front each and every week had what it took. Best average finish and the driver from Emporia, Kansas has taken home the trophy as the 2008 NASCAR Nationwide Series champion. For our entire ESPN NASCAR crew, Alan Bestwick saying so long from Homestead Miami Speedway. Join us tomorrow at 3 Eastern for the Sprint Cup finale.